You're gonna be just fine. I just talk. You know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit. Gloria. Thrill me. Hello everyone, welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry and joining me as always is the ever quotable Jay. I got no quotes for 20 movies, man. Well, you're a failure. And the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Uh, it's pipe time. Woo! Oh, yes it is. And joining us from uh, the wild world of uh, Australia, which was set up by convicts from, the, from Britain, uh, we have Tim. From the uh, Horror for Dummies podcast. Are you calling me a convict? Uh, that depends. Do you think it's cool? Yes. Then I yes. So yes, I right. am. <laughs> How you going, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've got uh, a question for you. I hear you like to blow dandelions. What does he taste like? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, uh, what? I was listening to your show the other day. Uh, yeah. and, uh, you were, you were on there with a guy, uh, named Dandelion and you were going to blow him <laughs> and I wanted to just know how that went down. It's good. He, he's, he's quiet and just lets me do my thing to him. So I like it. <laughs> Soft hands. All right, that's good. He takes it. I also want you to know that Darcy, the male gore, uh, male gore, male girl is a <laughs> porn star. So you can actually go see her fully naked having sex. I thought she yes. was, and I couldn't remember exactly her name. So it is Darcy, isn't it? Yes, it's Darcy. I was listening to your Halloween review, and uh, you were talking about that, and I was like, I wonder if he knows that that's a porn star or not. Pornhub is still yeah. free right now, so excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, damn it, Jay, no jacking off on the show. We've had this conversation. <laughs> This is why we're never going to review porn movies like Kenneth wants us to. <laughs> why? Stop every ten minutes. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. All right, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Jay, wow. how, how you been? How are you holding up in quarantine? Uh, it's it's just about over now. Uh, I got about three weeks with uh, one or two trips into work to take care of some stuff. Um, but uh, tomorrow I go back to work pretty much full time, so... It's my time to relax is over. Well, that's fair. You didn't need to relax anyway. Uh, what have you been relaxing with? Uh, movies and video games. I beat uh, I beat a couple games. What did I fucking beat? Uh, I beat Sonic Mania. I beat the DLC for the PS4 Spider-Man game. I'm like two boss fights away from the end of Axiom Verge. Um... And yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. Just dedicating some time to knocking games off my backlog. Didn't you also oh, Doom 2016? I beat Doom 2016. I was gonna say, didn't you also um, beat that uh, bad dad simulator game, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> I beat that before the quarantine started, though. I thought. Maybe. Oh, okay, maybe I... you did. I don't actually pay yes, attention to you. That was uh, 52 hours of gameplay. So that was. That was cool. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, Kenneth, how are you holding up in quarantine? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I actually have gotten uh, almost a week's worth of much-needed time at home, uh, hanging out with my kids. Uh, took a tumble on my mountain bike and thought I broke a couple of ribs, which was fun. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, built some archery stuff. Uh, learned how to grill a lot, a lot better. So I've been spending a lot of time outside. Watched Gretel and Hansel, which was actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> the tumble like on the mountain that. bike is the highlight. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm surprised you didn't tell me about this. I knew you'd uh, built the archery stuff because I was on the phone with you while you were building it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, man, me and Jade and Cheyenne were out riding. And, um, yeah, I, I leaned my bike over a little too far and my pedal caught the ground. And when it did, I, uh, the bike stopped and I kept going. That's fun. It reminds me of the time uh, you fell off the skateboard and broke that bone in your finger or hand. It was in my wrist, actually. Wrist, yeah, there you go. And, uh, yeah, and but uh, this time I thought I broke a couple of ribs, but I didn't. But I got some uh, I got some pretty gnarly road rash on my leg and on my side. Um, and my, uh, my ribs are just now getting to where they don't hurt near as bad as they did for the past couple of days. 
Um, and then I had to literally like within the hour, I took the bike down to the bicycle shop because my front wheel was bent. Yeah. Don't go to the hospital with your ribs all fucked up. Go get the bicycle fixed. Hey, I was all right. I mean, if I can breathe in really deep and it didn't hurt, there were no, bro- there were no broken ribs and hell, even if you break ribs, they can't do shit for you anyway. So throw some tape on it. Yeah. You know, I like your priorities. <laughs> um, <laughs> so- I got the wheels straightened back out and uh, took a couple of days away from riding, and uh, now I'm good. I actually got out on the mountain bike a little bit today with Jade, so. That's good. I wish I could straighten my life out. Um, (laughs) So, Tim, how, how, oh, Jesus, Metaloom Mutant just fell off my Baphomet onto my desk. Um, Fun fact. Uh, Tim, how are you doing? I'm okay. I uh, I'm still working, so I'm out every day, um, being essential, I guess. Um, but beyond that, man, I'm just I'm trying to take it easy. I'm trying to stay at home as much as I can, doing my part, sitting down, watching movies. Actually, last night I watched uh, a movie that may interest you, Jerry. Okay. Uh, that is that is Jaws three. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Jaws um, three. Show... <laughs> Jaws a revenge for I life. Show... Yeah. I agree. I agree. I I did I only watched it because the wife hasn't seen it before. It's the only Jaws film she hasn't seen. So I made her sit down and watch it with me. Yeah, it's still my least favorite in the franchise. Yeah. Did she what divorce she feel this about morning? <laughs> she she was pissing herself laughing. And oh. uh yeah, especially with the effects. Um she agrees with me. She thinks it's the worst in the franchise too. So that's good. Well, if anyone argues with yeah, me, I could end a marriage. We uh, have a whole <laughs> horror coliseum episode dedicated to me being right and Jaws of Revenge being a good movie. I have listened to that episode. I uh, love it, and I agree with everything you say. Jaws of Revenge is far superior. Yes, fuck Jaws 3D and everyone who thinks it's good. Y'all are <laughs> yep. inferior people. Uh, <laughs> Agreed. We look down on you. Well, that's dope. Uh, As for me, I am in a two-week quarantine that my job forced me into, uh, which I gladly took. And I have been watching uh, 1970s Yakuza films. I am on my seventh movie. Yeah, seventh movie in the Battles Without Honor and Humanity series directed by the same guy who directed Battle Royale. So those have been going great. Thank you to Kenneth for giving me his Amazon because I've been watching them on there. And uh, other than I've I've pretty much just been watching Yakuza films between that and some Takashi Miike ones like um, Dead or Alive, uh, which are not his uh, his best movies. No, honestly. but a girl fucks a dog in like the first fifteen minutes, so and that's it's, something. It's like. 30 minutes in. What's the name of this movie? Dead or Alive. <laughs> the, the detective goes them. to talk to the porno guy trying to get information about the Yakuza guy. Uh, and he's and he, he hands this dog to a guy and he's like, start jacking off the dog. And the girl's just kind of laying there. And then by the time the end of the conversation starts, the, the girl like gets doggy style, face down, ass up. And then he takes the dog and puts it into her and uh, starts... <laughs> taking pictures or filming or something. The cop's like, hold up, my fucking face is in this. Wow. Sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Takshi Miike, he runs that shit. Um, right, right, right. So, By the way, I have to ask this before we get going any further. Okay, yes, fine. I will send you a video of me and Reese pegging. <laughs> yes! Awesome. Fuck I mean, yeah. that's not where I was going, but cool. Um but no, my question is: is out of all of us here, who has seen Sonic the Hedgehog? This is horror. This is not horror related. I but saw I'm curious. It in the theater. The day Jerry? I have not. <laughs> I, I have not. No, I have not either. I, I, I just want to get it. I just wanted to get opinions because I actually enjoyed it. I hope they it make a sequel. Made um, laugh. I've heard most the people say they like it. Yeah, I'm. I, I really, I'm really glad that they went back. And redid Sonic because I, I, while I was watching the movie, I looked at the first, you know, version of him and then the now. And I'm like, yeah, this movie would probably not been as good. Yeah. <laughs> There's some but, guy out there who's like super pissed they changed it because now we can't jack off to it. 
Fuck that guy. <laughs> he has a teeth fetish. <laughs> but I was just curious. Um, well, all right. Then. Maybe I'll watch it this week. Maybe I'll, I'll take a break from my it's Japanese gangster films and watch Sonic the Hedgehog. It's pretty much a Japanese gangster film, so... <laughs> Is it? I don't... No, it's not at all. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um... Okay, so uh, welcome to the best of the 2010s. I don't want to say it like, you can always say 80s, 90s. Yes. Uh, how do you say the 10s? The 10s, just like the that. Tens. The 10s. The 10s, it sounds the weird. The tens. So we're doing the 2010s. Yeah. Um, that just sounds fucking weird to me. Uh, so how this I is going to go we're down. now in the get fucked 20s, so. <clears throat> get fucked <laughs> 20s, our new motto. Oh yeah, I mean we're we're starting off with a hell of a run for this decade. Yeah, I I'm really <laughs> excited about all the uh quarantine porn that's coming out. Hell yeah. I'm really waiting for the Contagion uh spin-off on horrorporn.com. Dude, I came across <laughs> one on Pornhub today with uh, that already had people doing just going at it in masks with like, you it know, their Easter. own versions of respir- yeah. respirators and stuff. It was great. So, <laughs> What's that gotta do with it? Spending time with your family. In the <laughs> shitter? <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, are you watching porn while taking a shit? Or are you hiding in the bathroom to watch porn to get away no, from your I was family? Taking a, I was taking a shit, just scrolling through the normal stuff that I scroll through. That is true. Kenneth is someone who just like will be eating pasta, just watching Gianna Michaels take it in, in the mouth. <laughs> yep. Like it's <laughs> no Fair big up, deal. Man. I mean, it's just like normal everyday <laughs> cinema to me. <laughs> yeah, his bathroom reading material was all porno when I lived with him. Fair enough. It was just stacks and stacks of big titty porn magazines. Yep, yep. Hell not, yeah. Not that I'm complaining. Um, Okay, so how we're doing this, uh, if you don't remember, we are going through each year and picking our two favorite movies from that year. Not necessarily the best movies from that year, but our personal favorites. Um, yes. Are we, we doing honorable mentions? Like just bring them up. I didn't pick any. So I, I didn't not. pick any. So, but if, if you have honorable mentions, I'm all for you shouting it out. I, I do have one year I have an honorable mention. I I'm I'm willing to bet your guys' movies that aren't my two movies would be my honorable mentions. Most likely, but uh, yeah, Kenneth, if you got honorable mentions, you can shout them out for sure. I got um, a shit ton. <laughs> okay, well let's maybe not go <laughs> too far. Don't give movie. me ten movies every year. Hey man, there were some good movies. Like I'll talk about my two favorites, and then I'll just be like, "And these were awesome," and then just run through them real quick, and then not talk about them. You know what I'm saying? Like not give a review or anything, but just be like, "Okay," and these other ones were badass. Okay, fair enough. All right, so uh, we are going to start. It is going to go Jay, Kenneth, Tim, and me. That's that would be Jerry. Bring up the rear. Oh uh, yeah, by the way, Jerry, I tried to stay on top of the year that they actually got the full wide release but if i fuck up on a couple of them go ahead and correct me uh i will probably just let it go at this point just because some of them were so fucking hard to to pin down like one of the movies that show up in like my 2018 technically first came out in 2015 but didn't get a wide release until 2018 so fuck it um so, yeah, guys, if we fuck up on a year slightly, suck it. I don't know. Just deal with it. <laughs> this is this is our fucking show, and we're all fuck-ups in our father's eyes, so we're a fuck-up in your eyes, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, 2010. Jay, what were your two favorite movies from that year? So, first up, I have the horror comedy Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Uh watched it it showed up on netflix one month week whatever uh watched it with actually a group of people including people who don't typically like horror laughed our asses off the whole time the the practical effects are good the gore is good the comedy is great it's a nice spin on the uh the killer rednecks in the woods and it's just a hilarious watch from beginning to end absolutely loved it very nice uh... and then uh number two is the final uh, it's a group of kids who are bullied, kidnap their bulliers, and torture them. And I like torture porn, so I that was fun. I've never even heard of this. I've got to fucking find this. The final? Yep, the final. Okay. Mm. Uh, wow, I'm I'm shocked. I have not heard of this movie, and it sounds like it's right up my alley. Yeah, this, I really enjoyed it. Again, it sounds familiar. good practical effects. 
pretty simple plot, not a lot of twists or anything, but it's it's a good, you know, we're the we're the uh we're the antagonized and now we're gonna flip the tables on you. But they're all kids. They're all high school kids, so makes it even better. The kids are all right. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the Halloween remake. <laughs> Beats that dude with a tree limb. Yay. Um all right, Kenneth, what do you got? Also, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. The movie hey. is fucking hilarious. Uh, when that one came out, it was the same thing. I, can't, I think I came across it on Netflix, just like Jay did. And I was like, okay, well, I'll check this out. And then I was blown away. The two guys that are Tucker and Dale, they are fucking hilarious. They worked so well together. I, w- I don't know if they did another movie together, but I would like to see another movie in a minute. I would also like to see a sequel to Tucker and Dale. Um, but I just, I just thought it was hilarious. And then um, I can't remember who's who. Which one's Tucker and which one's Dale? Jay? I, <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Uh, anyway, I mean, anyway, Dale, D- Dale was the bigger guy. Okay. Okay. So, so Dale, he was also in Zack and Mary make a porno in like a little small spot. He was the one that comes in drunk in Zack and Mary make a porno when they're in the coffee shop, wanting coffee in the middle of the night oh, after yeah. the football game. And he looks at that other chick. He's like, Ooh, yeah, you and your little dog. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a he was in a, a a comedy show that I used to watch that was really funny. I can't remember the name of it. I think it got canceled almost immediately, but it was it was pretty funny. And then the other guy, of course, is Wash from Firefly. Right, right, right. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. And then my other one for that was Insidious. I really enjoyed Insidious. I liked Insidious too. I thought nah, it was- Insidious also. <laughs> I was about to say, cool. <laughs> but yeah, I thought Insidious was good. I really liked it. I liked the direction they went with it uh, for for it to kind of start really getting into that whole universe. You know, I really liked that. So uh, it was good. And then do uh, you want me to go ahead and just throw out my short little list of honorable mentions? I mean, I guess uh, none of us did that except Kenneth, which to be fair, we used to do that. Only reason I didn't think about doing it this time is because I didn't think about it. So, yeah, go ahead, Kenneth. When I was looking at the list of the movies, I was just like, oh, man, this one was fucking great, too, and this one, and this one, and this one. So I just started fucking writing down. But I got Piranha 3D, which I thought was great. It was fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah, Stake Land, which if any, none of y'all have watched that, that, I think it's a great fucking version of, uh, of Vampire. Really good thing. Dante's Inferno, the animated Dante's Inferno, was really fucking good. Uh, Black Swan, I thought was great. Uh, I enjoyed Predators. That's kind of more, but, but it still falls in there. Uh, Buried with um, Ryan Reynolds and The Crazies. I, I think all those were really good for that year. Crazies right. would probably be my honorable mention. I really enjoyed that cool. one. All right. Uh, I think Piranha 3D would probably be mine. I fucking love that movie. Uh, Tim, what do you got? Uh, I am agreeing with Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. That is my <laughs> pick for that year, and I'm exactly the same. I think I found it on Netflix, thought I'd chuck it on. And this movie, I never laughed so hard to the point of crying so much. This point made me do it <laughs> multiple times. The scene with the bees, that scene is just excellent. Uh, so, yeah, I just loved this movie. Definitely best of the, best of the year. Uh, my second one is Paranormal Activity 2. And before you crucify me, I am uh, a fan of that franchise. And Paranormal Activity 2 was my favorite of the franchise. It scared the living fuck out of me, these movies. Um, Not so much when watching it, but after you watch it, after you turn off all the lights and walk to bed, that's when it really bothered me. So I would give props to Paranormal Activity 2. Is 2 the one where... Uh, at the end of it, she like walks up behind her husband while he's on the couch and then just breaks his neck. Yes. Yeah. That part right there, I got to give it to you, man. I mean, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not saying that they absolutely suck, but I'm not mm-hmm. a huge fan of the movies. But that scene right there yeah. where, he, you know, the guy's just chilling, don't know what's going on or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's just, yep, up, oh, dead. <laughs> that, that one, that one. And, and the crazy thing is, is somebody that you know, yeah, that, that was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why everyone seems to give shit to the paranormal activity movies and I don't I okay some of them do deserve it but the first two I think are brilliant I love them um, they do work well for together For me they are just too there's like it's got a good premise and the the overarching story um interests me 
but there's yeah. a whole lot of nothing that goes on in the middle. Yeah, of I get movies. it. And that's that's what does it for me. I, 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 I go ahead. Sorry. I recently uh, rediscovered a love for found footage uh, after not liking it for so long, and I rewatched um, the Paranormal Activity series. And I actually got to say, I, I I really dig the first three, but I think with any found footage movie. Uh, the beginning and middle tends to have a lot of fluff mm-hmm. um, where there's just not not a lot happening. And uh, some of the movies can pull it off where it's doing a good job building up the characters or building up the lore to set it up. Um, like, I think Paranormal Activity 3 is a great example of being able to do all of that. Um, but, yeah, I actually enjoy the series now. Yeah, maybe I'll give them a rewatch. So, I'd like to watch them in chronological order. I think if I watched them in chronological order, I might be able to, you know, uh, get into it a little more. But I think I stopped watching it. Let's see. How did they go? Wasn't the third one like a prequel? Uh, Yeah, it was like Believe a witch so, coming yeah. thing. Yeah, and then the fourth one comes out, and the fourth one follows the story of the chick from the first one, right? Uh, Yes, she lives like across the street. Yeah, something. Isn't that the one where the where the cult and all that stuff starts coming in? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's where I think I think that was the last one that I watched, and that's where I kind of lost lost it from that point. So I think if I, I if I can get a hold of them, I may go back and try to watch them in like chronological or chronological order and 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 try to piece it together and see if I like it a little more. That's fair. Now that we're doing, nice. uh, reviewing Paranormal Activity. Um, all right. So for me, uh, neither one of my films have been mentioned at all. So first we're going to Japan with, uh, Coldfish by Scion Sono. Um, I've never even heard of it. Of course not. What's, uh, Scion Sono is a director that is, you either love him or hate him. And he, he's, famous for directing suicide club um but coldfish is just this really intriguing movie about this guy who uh his daughter's disrespectful to him and his wife while super pretty uh doesn't get along with his daughter because he married really quickly after her mom died and so, like, they don't get along, and so, like, she won't fuck him ever because she doesn't want the daughter to come in and see it. Um, and they own a fish shop, and they live in the tropical fish store. Fish store. And uh, he ends up... Coronavirus right there. What, in the fish store? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's Japanese, not Chinese, fucker. Uh, it don't matter whether it's Japanese or Chinese or anywhere like that. It's the fish. It's the fish. Fish or you know, universal. It it's a bat. A, a bat, fish, whatever. It's no, all they're two exactly separate things. <laughs> Actually, I heard that it came from a, a, a what are the one of those things that looks like a dragon? It's like a pangolin or something like that. Okay, this is not COVID nineteen. The podcast. <laughs> you know, I actually I was listening to Spotify or something, and they advertised the COVID nineteen podcast. I was like, damn, people on top oh, of that. Ready jumping <laughs> on it. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so he ends up meeting this eccentric, uh, tropical fish store owner, but his fish store is like super fucking huge and crazy. And he gets entangled in with him and just, uh, have a course sh- shit goes insane. It is absolutely a disturbing movie. Uh, Sion Sono's wife's in it and she has perfect tits in case you didn't know. And she does show them in the movie. What's uh, the name of this? Cold Fish. Old fish. I will have to send it to you because you will. It is not on any streaming service. You do that, sir. You send it to uh, me. But I will warn you, it's also two and a half hours long. I don't give a shit. Um, but there is nudity in it and hey, massive man. amounts of blood. Okay, <laughs> that works for me. I'm down. That sounds right up my alley. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Silence Sono, I, I absolutely adore him, and I, I love that movie. Uh, my. Favorite movie of 2010 without a fucking doubt is hashtag fuck Kenneth. I saw the devil. Yeah, yeah. This movie was is a goddamn perfect fucking 10 out of 10. I knew that both of your movies for this year were going to be Asian. 
Uh, fucking <laughs> racist. Um, I knew it. Th- this movie uh, involves a serial killer who kills the fiance of a detective, and it basically just comes a cat and mouse scene for the rest of the movie, and it is absolutely insane. Uh, the car stabbing scene is one of the best shot things I've ever seen in my life. That's this movie good. is just a wild fucking ride. If you have not seen I Saw the Devil, go find it. It is such a good fucking movie. Also, I'm not saying that it's song. a it's not a bad movie. It's just not as, in my opinion, as 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 worth you know taking taking it down the throat like like he's like Jerry's talking about. It's Look, just not. You can be a peasant. And have an opinion like this surf. Or you can be a king and have opinion of royalty and say that I saw the devil is 10 out of 10. (laughs) Make your choice. Elitist. You're goddamn right. (laughs) Okay. That's how this happens. All right. (laughs) Is someone playing the guitar now? No, that was for you. That was all for you. You just playing the guitar for me? No, nah, it was a spring on my lamp. Oh, okay. That's weird. Uh, speaking of weird, Jay. <laughs> yeah. 2011, what do you got? All right. I have, uh, first I have Chrome Skull, Laid to Rest 2. It's a sequel to Independent Slasher. Uh, dude wears a metal mask shaped like a skull, thus the name. Uh, it's just brutal and fun. Lots of death. Not The first one, I think, is still better, but looking at the rest of the year, that's kind of what I decided to go with. Uh, but it's just fun kills. A little bit of Saw vibe going on in there. Um, I just like watching people get killed brutally with lots of blood, and that's what it is. And so that's what I went with. Um, the other one I have is Chillerama, which is a... Uh, I can't think of the word when it's a bunch of little shorts together. Anthologies. What is that? Anthology. That's it. It's an anthology film. Um, but it's mostly comedy and it's kind of making fun of older, uh, you know, like first generation horror movies. Um, like they make fun of old, like 60s monster movies where a guy's sperm you like think... mutates and gets as big as the uh, as, as buildings. Um, Hold on. Time out. You yeah. think the 60s is is first generation horror? No, 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 no. You know, like, I, that's the wrong words, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, older, you know? Uh-huh. Well, because, so they also make fun of, like, like, uh, I'm terrible at decades. Whenever surf movies are popular, they make fun of black and white movies. Yeah, 1950s. Like, it's, they're all, they're all there. Like, all the generations are there, and it's, and it's pretty funny. Uh-huh. You know, I've never watched Chillerama. I actually should take the time to watch it. It's yeah, pretty yeah neither, funny. neither have I. I agree. It's pretty funny, but y'all also know I'm a Adam Green fucking suck up. So, oh Is yeah. He, so he, he only directed. Do with that? Uh, he directed one of the segments, and he was a producer. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm I'm more on board. I don't know if I am now. <laughs> Can I, 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 just... kick, I think you get a kick at least uh, at least a couple of the segments. Okay, oh, Anne you know, Frankenstein. Kenneth, Anne Frankenstein. Okay. Let that sink into your head. <laughs> Puppies. Okay. Sperm that mutates and looks like a giant version of those fucking things from Night of the Comet. I mean, not Night of the Comet, Night of the Creeps. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying it would probably be interesting to watch. Like I said, I'm half and half forget on Adam Green. Adam he's done Green good shit and he's directed, done terrible shit. <laughs> forget that he directed Frozen and remember that he gave us Holliston, one of the greatest things to ever exist. All right, all right, all right. You got me there. Holliston is fucking great. I, I recently just rewatched both seasons of Holliston. He's actually pushed to get season three made by, by Shudder. Nice, nice, that'd be cool. I hope it happens. I've never watched them, so they're worth a watch. Holliston? Yeah, dude, yeah. it's fucking oh hilarious. Oh my man. god, it is so funny. It's okay. so good. Oh, so good. Yeah, definitely, I, definitely go ahead and just wherever you can find it or or order it off Amazon, whatever you need to do, just get it. Yeah, I think it's, the Blu-rays it's are pretty good. cheap. It's good. Okay. Um, All right. Okay, Jay. Uh, 
that was both your movies, right? That yep, was both yep. my movies. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll go to Kenneth, but I do want to say this. Did anyone else think 2011, weakest year of the decade? It was a great week. Yeah. All right. Kenneth, go ahead. All right. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get this out of the way. Chrome Skull was my honorable mention, you know, because I actually was more, I, I actually really enjoyed the first one better. But uh, I don't know whether, Jay, you noticed, but I got the poster on the wall from Chrome Skull, and uh, it's got the director and Chromie's autographs on them. Oh, nice. I did not. Nice. It, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but my two was, one was Drive Angry. I really enjoyed that movie. I thought it was a fun ride. You know, it's got Nicolas Cage and Amber Heard in it. Uh, a horror movie? Yeah, yeah. It's considered a horror movie because he comes back from hell, and at the end of it, you know, he's like, you know, fighting Satanists and all this other kind of shit. It's considered a horror movie. It's like a horror action movie, you know what I'm saying? To coin the phrase. Jerry? I'll take your word for it. It does not pass the INDB test, but okay. All right, and then... The other one was uh, The Devil's Rock. I actually really enjoyed that. It's like a, it's a movie about uh, these two guys that uh, are are basically, uh, I think they're French, and they're they're right on the eve of D-Day, um, and uh, they go they're they're out and they come across this island, and on the island they find a Nazi bunker, and inside the bunker they're trying to do some occult stuff to bring some bring a uh, evil entity up from hell to help fight in the war for the Nazis and it's got a lot of psychological stuff in it, some really good special effects, stuff like that. It's it's actually really, really good. So if you ever get that a chance. Very similar to the origin of Hellboy. Uh, something like that, but uh but this is a lot like I said, it's a lot more psychological once the they get onto the island and the opening is coming open and you've got hell fucking with them and shit like that. And then on top of it you got the Nazis and all the rest of that. It's actually really, really good. Um, I came across an article for it in Fangoria, I think, and uh, one of the pictures was what this thing looked like that was coming up, and also, you know, it had hot half-naked chicks, so you combine the two together, and it's definitely got my interest. And uh, so I got it as soon as I could, and uh, it actually turned out to be really, really good. It sounds good. I'm sold. I want to see it. Yeah, check it out. It's good. It's on uh, Tubi. Oh, okay. Fuck yeah. I'll have to check that out. Uh, do you have any other honorable mentions or you? Oh, that's it for me that year, man. That year was weak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we'll save the honorable mentions for like the, before we move on to the next year now, just so we don't screw anybody up uh, with what they're going to do. Tim, what do you got? All right. So my favorite year of 2011 was your next. This one just blew me away with its twists and turns and gore and the soundtrack was kick-ass i just fucking love this from start to finish um so your next is my number one my number my my number two favorite film of 2011 was a film called the tunnel you heard about this korean movie right no australian movie Australian. Oh, okay. Yeah. So basically what it is, it's a found footage film and it's filmed underneath the train tunnels um, underneath Sydney in New South Wales. Um, and the reason it's not a number two favorite film is because I've been down in those tunnels and that shit is scary as fuck. And this movie, it's basically a monster movie, um, but it's really well done. Found footage. Um, so if you don't like found footage, you won't like this movie, but it's creepy and I guess because I've been down there where this film was shot, it makes me enjoy it a bit more because when you're down there, you hear noises that echo and they sound like things that you don't want to um, meet. So I just love this movie from start to finish. So um, that's my number two. If you like this movie, you should actually, in 2016, a Korean movie came out called Tunnel. That is, 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 really? is kind of similar. Uh, it's about a, a guy who gets... You know how uh, they have those tunnels that like go through a mountain? That you, like you drive your car through that Godzilla likes to crush? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, a guy's in one of those and, and, it, and it collapses. So, Ooh. in his, yeah, he's driving through it and it collapses. Um, so, yeah, 2016. That's why I was like, oh, the Korean movie. But, uh, yeah, I see there is an Australian one. I'll have to check that one out. You know, the, the budget on that movie was like 135 grand. On the tunnel? The yeah. Australian one? Yeah, wow. I just looked it up. It was on like 135,000. Shit, okay. Good. Damn. 
So I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, I'll, I'll watch it too. Shit. A lot of the movies that I've seen that actually come from over there are actually really good. Um, it just sucks that I can't keep up with a lot of them. It, it seems like that in the U S we we're starting to get to where we're keeping up with Asian movies a lot more. Um, so, uh, but most of the Australian movies I've seen are pretty good, so I'll watch it, even though I'm not a big fan of found footage. Nice. All right. Well, once again, my two movies have not been picked yet. <laughs> uh, we'll figure. I'm sure that ends next year, um, or at least it ends <laughs> in 2013. Uh, but I'm pretty sure 2012 would end also. Uh, but my f- uh, first one is a found footage movie with Grave Encounters. I really enjoy this movie. It is a spoof on all the paranormal ghost chasing shows. Um, And, you know, these people go in and they never really catch anything. So it was like, what if that group of people with their cameras and all this shit actually got caught up in some shit in a real haunted house and it really went down and, you know, people started dying. How It's just done so fucking well. And it blew me away. It's one of the movies that made me re-fall in love with found footage. Well, not re-fall in love. Made me fall in love for the first time. Uh, It was like, she was such a bitch to me. And I hated her. But then we went away for a few years. Met up again. And she's like changed as a person. And I've matured. And now she does that thing with her tongue I really like. And you're a masochist. And I'm a masochist. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Grave Encounters is actually really good, and I highly recommend it. Uh, the next one is Shark Night 3D. Fuck everyone. <laughs> this movie a fun is film. so much fun. I have a Shark Night 3D shirt. <coughs> I really? love this. Yeah, it was a promotional shirt uh, when it was in theaters. That's um, awesome. I fucking love this movie. I like my shark movies uh, to be serious. AKA, I want them to be actual real sharks and I want it to be taken serious. They're going to still be comedy and all that, but I don't want the shark to have seven heads, three tentacles, and a tornado mm-hmm. uh, uh, who came back from the dead because a pastor raped it in the snow. I don't <laughs> need all that. Sharks, water, people, nom, nom, nom. I agree. Yeah, clinical sex is awesome. Uh, well, yes, but not in my shark movie. Keep that in my octopus movies. I actually watched <laughs> that movie recently. What, Shark Night 3? Yeah, I watched it well, a couple months ago. Um, I got on a shark kick and so I started watching them. I got another question for you. <clears throat> that Grave Encounters movie that you were talking about? Yes. Did you tell me to watch that when it came out? I probably because I watched it when I was doing my found footage kick. Is that the one where they go into like a like a church or something? No, it's like a hospital. It's like an old broken down hospital. I might be getting confused with something else, but I think I've seen it. Yeah, it's really good. Um, well, I rewatched it the other day. I rewatched one and two. Um, have you seen part two, Graven Cannons two? Mm-mm. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's not as good as the first one, but it's okay. Yeah, that, that's basically my thoughts too. It was, it was decent. wasn't as good as the first one. Yeah, I just don't. Um, I like the story angle. Hmm. But then it gets really fucking wacky with its explanation of things, and with I don't want to spoil it, but that one character showing up, it's just kind of like what the fuck. You know, yeah. it, it just gets a little fucking wacky. How the yeah. fuck are you here? You were dead. Yeah, kind, yeah, pretty much. I guess you haven't seen it, but you just pretty much hit the nail on the head. <laughs> That's usually the way it goes. Uh, like that. It's just like, where the fuck did you come from? I literally saw your head get split in two. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, Grave Encounters 1 and 2 is worth a double watch. And then you watch Shark Knight 3D. You can double that up with Bait 3D. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> both fantastic fucking movies. Um, so bam, there you go. We are moving on to 2012. This is where I expect y'all to start matching up with me. So mm-hmm. Jay, 2012, what you got? 2012. First up is Cabin in the Woods, um, meta horror from Joss Whedon. 
Fucking, I loved it. The only thing I didn't really like about it was the trailer showed a lot of the uh, the gags could have been cut better, but uh, other than that, the movie is just fantastic. Uh, makes fun of a lot of tropes, explains why all Cabin in the Wind movies are similar, um, and then the ending is just fucking nutso gonzo crazy, and I absolutely love it. Um, number two is the collection. Um, think like Home Alone meets Saw. <laughs> um, serial killers torturing a, a family by setting a bunch of traps in the house at the same time as a guy is trying to break into the house to steal something uh, and they kind of clash. Uh, there's a sequel which is also fantastic um, but I absolutely love love the collection. All right. I have not seen the collection but I have heard great things. Really? Well you should watch yeah. it. Both um, good. Kenneth, what do you got? Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods was fucking great. It was. It, it, I'd probably have to say it was a breath of fresh air for the genre. I mean, the meta part of it. I mean, the whole nine. It was. It, it was just fantastic. And then, uh, no one lives. That's my second one. Ooh, um, interesting. Yeah, yeah. No one lives was fucking. I mean, I was blown away by it. I had not. I had never heard of it. And then when I was in um, when I was in school in Daytona for motorcycles, uh, a guy that I went to school with told me about it. He's like, "Have you seen this movie?" And I was like, "No." And he hooked me up with it, and I was blown away. It's got um, I can't remember the dude's Luke name, Evans. but yeah, yeah, it's got him love in it. Love that movie. Yeah, you introduced me to that movie. Right, and and it, it it was just superb. It was it was a lot better than I was expecting, and then when I watched it, I was just blown away. So uh, that was my second one for the year. Um, and you said we're waiting for the end. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll wait. Uh, I have uh, I have a me. correction. Uh, my movie title is correctly correct. I gave the plot of the first one. The first one is called The Collector. The second one is The Collection. The Collector came out in two thousand nine. Uh, so the plot I gave was to the first one. <laughs> Uh, so I fucked up there. It's still uh, still one of my top movies, but I uh, I fucked up the plot. So my best. So good he confused it with the first one. All <laughs> right. <laughs> See, I was thinking that when you were saying it, but then at the same time, I was just like, well, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, no, I was wrong. I fucked it up. <laughs> You're uh, never wrong. Collection kind of ups. The collection ups everything from the collector. Uh, the traps are bigger. The area is bigger. The victims are more full. Uh, fantastic okay well um so far my two new my two movies have not been said so let's see if tim matches me mm. tim what do you got i don't think it will because i'm <laughs> i'm coming on board with cabin in the woods uh that is my favorite of this year such a smart and entertaining movie um the only problem i have with that movie is it's not really a problem it's just me being greedy is I wanted more. I wanted to see more of the other creatures and monsters come to life. Um, but still, this movie is a perfect ten for me. I loved it from start to finish. It's unreal. Um, my second film is going to be Wreck Three Genesis. Um, if you are, if any of you know the Wreck films, this one is very different to the first two. This one's set at a wedding, which you don't really see many films many horror films anyway, set at a wedding. Um, I just think this movie is so much fun. It's gory. It's batshit insane. And it starts off as a found footage film, but turns into a normal cinematic film halfway through. Um, but oh. yeah, I just love it. It's a lot of fun. Um, think of a wedding with zombies and that's what you get. All righty then. Well, I'm down. I'm down to check it out. Um, uh, I've seen the got... first one and I liked it, but I haven't mm -hmm. watched uh, the second or third. Now the wreck movies are called Quarantine in a different country, right? Well, no, 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 no. The remakes are. Yeah, from what oh, I understand, okay. from what I understand, all right, the first two, Wreck and Quarantine, are pretty much the same movie. That's uh, right. After that, they start with Wreck Two and Quarantine Two. They start going in different directions. I gotcha. I think the ending for quarantine is different than Wreck. It may be, because I know, if I'm not mistaken, Wreck goes for a spiritual direction and quarantine goes for the biological direction. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Um, okay, well, my two were not picked. So, oh. uh, first we have 
Uh, one of the best remakes ever. Uh, and this one is starring Elijah Wood, and that is the uh, remake Maniac. of John Spinelli's... Uh, not yes. John. Joe Spinelli's Maniac. Holy shit, if you're going to remake a film, this. It is beautifully shot. It is it is such a wonderful fucking ride. It, it is a great tweak on the series on on the original formula. <clears throat> I just love it. It is I, I if you don't like this movie, then you are the biggest maniac fanboy I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's one of I my honorable it. mentions. Um Next up would be my my favorite. I think this movie deserves more love, and that would be the Ethan Hawke starring Sinister. Sinister is really good. I like Sinister too. You got me real high with Maniac, and then (laughs) I fucking love Sinister. This when I first watched this movie, I had to pause it and step out of the room because I was actually getting an anxiety attack from this movie. Um, just, I don't know what it is about this movie. It fucking got to me. It just got to me on some level that I, I I just haven't been touched like that since my uncle at that weird party when I was five. (laughs) Um, it just made me uncomfortable. It got under my skin. I I love the, him finding all the, all the footage, uh, all the creepy weird shit happening. The Bagul. I just fucking love this movie. I think it's one of the most underrated movies out there. Flat out fucking period. Um, so, Kenneth, what are the honorable mentions of the year? Maniac was one of them because that I agree with you. It's one of the best remakes I've ever seen. <laughs> um, American Mary. I think that oh, was yeah. a great movie. That movie is fantastic. Yeah, too. I think American Mary is very underrated. Um, Would You Rather? I actually really oh, enjoyed yeah. that. Um, I don't know if, uh, obviously Tim's seen it, but I don't know if Jay or Jerry have seen it. If you have not, watch it. It's great. It's yeah, got, uh, I like it. It's got Jeffrey Combs in it. Um, the woman the, the in one black. Sasha Gray's in? Yes. yes okay. It. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the woman in black. I actually my, really like that. My cat just fell off the back of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> so. And then uh, the last one is uh, Prometheus. Oh, shit. I forgot about that one. Yeah, Prometheus was really good. I actually really enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, I had so, to put that So did I. Yeah. All right. Dope. Uh, we move into 2013, the year that uh, one of the greatest remakes came out, and I expect to see it on almost everyone's list. Uh, <laughs> so, spoiler, everyone. Jay, 2013. Uh, all right. So... This is uh, where the dates get a little screwy. Uh, so my first pick is your next, which uh, Tim picked earlier for a different year. Um, ah, okay. But uh, that's that's what I could kind of lock down its wide release, so that's where I put it. I actually thought it was originally in 2011, um, but uh, that was a film festival circuit, so I double-checked and put it in 2013. But yes, yeah, same, you are, same you reasons. Are correct. Uh, your next was amazing. Um Absolutely. I love home invasion movies in general, but uh, that one is just it's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then the remake, uh, of course, uh, Evil Dead. Uh, I love it. I like the direction they went. I like the nods to the original. Um, I like that it may not even be a remake afterwards because the director's like, oh, maybe it takes place in a different dimension. Um, but uh, in general, it's fantastic. And that ending scene where it's raining blood and it's actual blood. Uh, well, not human blood but i mean it's actual fake blood like it's not cg uh because they pumped fake blood through a rain machine is fucking amazing very very true all right kenneth what do you got um evil dead evil dead is fucking amazing um that to me is probably it, it is definitely in my top five of remakes, if not number one. Um, it was amazing. Um, it was a great experience. The first time I ever got to see it, um, which I got to see it with Jerry um, in the theater. So it was awesome. I actually went to Panama City to see it with him. Um, and then uh, my second one was The Conjuring. I think the entire universe for The Conjuring, the way it's going, the direction it's going, everything else like that. I think it this this whole thing that they've got going with it and around it. I think it's great. You know, uh, even though I think Ed Lorraine Warren were fucking fruitcakes, I still, 
I still that I still think where they're going with it is great. So those are my two for the year: Evil Dead and The Conjuring. All right, Tim, what do you got? Evil Dead, <laughs> big surprise. <laughs> um, I remember seeing this is easily my favorite cinema experience going to see Evil Dead because it wasn't widely screened here in Australia. Um, I think they only had like one session um, in the whole of New South Wales. And every single horror fan went and saw that session and it was just a blast. I remember the, the opening scene with the girl and the shotgun. I won't say much more. Oh, um, God, when yes. that, yeah, when that happened, the entire cinema erupted with cheers and laughter. And that movie was just such an absolute blast for me. I had fun from start to finish. Some of the most insane uh, practical effects and gore scenes um, that made my blood turn cold. The part with the razor in the tongue. Oh, fuck. Um, but yeah, that movie was just, yeah, I, I agree. It's one of my favorite remakes of all time. Um, <laughs> I'm exactly the same. My, um, my second pick is also the conjuring. Um, I am a big fan of the conjuring series, not so much, um, some of the spinoffs, but the main and Lorraine Warren storyline, I really enjoy, uh, and this one, yeah, it's still I, – I watched it the other day, and it's still so much fun. It still scares me, um, certain scenes. Um, I just love it, and I, and I love the um, the whole storyline with Ed and Lorraine. I just love those two characters, and, um, yeah, that's my second favorite film of the year. Remember, kids, it's okay to like the cin- cinematic Ed and Lorraine, but not the real life ones. <laughs> yeah, awesome. the, the, take the time to do some research and you'll come to the same conclusion, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 2013, the year we all picked Evil Dead. Uh, now, yeah, I'm usually the guy that's always picking uh, stuff that I, I, I know is not going to get picked. Uh, I, I tend to like these really weird things, but... You can't deny the Evil Dead remake. You just can't. Nope. It's it's that fucking good. It is uh it's my second favorite movie in the franchise after the very original. Um it is just a blast to watch. It is it is such a great modern take on it. It it, it does enough different and similar to make it work. I just fucking love it. And anyone who wears glasses and then something goes into the eye through the glasses <laughs> and I wear glasses, it fucks with me. It fucks with my soul, okay? It's <laughs> it's like ordering some really good pizza from hot uh from Pizza Hut and then it shows up and it's not the pizza you ordered and it has a bunch of vegetables on it and you're just like I ordered chicken and pepperoni, not fucking uh, pineapple and green peppers. Do you really get chicken and pepperoni on your pizza? Fuck yes. Is it good? I get I get Fuck pineapple yes. and Italian sausage. Uh, Reese gets pineapple and green pepper, changes the sauce to barbecue sauce, make it a cheese stuffed crust pizza, and then when it gets here, she puts more barbecue sauce on it. Good for her. That does not sound appealing to me. It is not, but me, <laughs> pepperoni and chicken. If I get a third top, and I'll throw some sausage on there. Spinning it, the delivery guy's hot. Okay. No what? Y'all really? <laughs> I was just a new really? thing about you, the delivery guy. I got kind of speechless for a minute while I had that whole scenario running through my head. God damn. Um. Uh, okay. So yeah, I absolutely am with y'all on on that one. Now this next movie, uh. I don't even know if Tim has seen this movie, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say he has not seen this movie, even though it is a found footage movie. And he seems to be a big fan of that. (laughs) Uh, That would be Cult by director Koji Shinarashi, who is famous for uh, the most famous Japanese uh, found footage movie, Nori the Curse. Um, He did a couple of uh, found footage movies, my favorite being Occult, but uh O C C U L T. But in 2013 he did Colt, which is about a house that is haunted and a television crew uh comes to talk to it and document it and they invite these like uh I don't know, Buddhist priests or something to come fight the spirits and then that doesn't work, so they invite this like eccentric fucking 
blonde dude who looks like the main character in an RPG. Uh, it's just fucking, it's great. It's, it's definitely this dude's style. Um, while it's probably the weakest of some of his found footage movies that I've seen, I still really fucking enjoyed it. So, uh, Colt, it's actually on YouTube, subtitled. You can check it out if uh, you're interested in found footage movies. Uh, it is fantastic. I absolutely uh, enjoyed my ride with it. So, mm. and, and am I right, Tim? One. You've never seen no. it? No, knew I've it. never seen it. <laughs> I knew it. It's, it's Japanese. Um, okay, uh, with that being said... Kenneth, what do we got for honorable mentions this year? All right. Some of these may vary back and forth between 2013 and 2014, but... Um, eh, who gives a shit? Right. I got Mama, Insidious 2, uh, World War Z. I actually liked it. Um, the Purge. Um, I thought it started off for a great franchise. Kind of went downhill. But, you know. um, let's see. What else do we got on here? Da, da, da. I thought Texas Chainsaw was pretty good. Uh, Wolf Creek 2. I, I mm. loved both of those. Those movies were fucking awesome. Um, My only problem with the Wolf Creek movies is uh, they pushed the uh, fake news of Australia existing, and I just don't think that's right to do. Obviously, I thought the first Wolf Creek was better than the second one. I think the second one was a little over the top. Um but still, great movies. Uh, the Green Inferno, uh, da, 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 and I think that's all of them that I got for 2013. All right. Uh, we move on to 2014, a year mm -hmm. that I also think no one's going to match up with me. Maybe. Uh, Jay, what do you got? All right. So these are these are probably the least, uh, the least mainstream movies on my list, uh, besides the final, I guess. Uh, first up is Late Phases. Uh, this is a Ooh. werewolf movie. Um, nice. Great movie. I, I love it. I love it. Um, it's about a blind vet who moves into a retirement community, uh, learns that there's a werewolf, and prepares to fight him and all the hijinks that ensue. Uh, great werewolf effects, great gore, um, and a fun original plot um, that I enjoyed. Uh, the other one is called 13 Sins. Uh, this is a rich people forces poor people to do fucked up shit um, movie. And as the movie goes on, it gets more and more fucked up. It's like, go steal that pack of gum to start. And then at the end, it's like, cut off your best friend's arm. Uh, and I just I just love it. It's, it's good fun. I, I don't know if I've seen that. I think I may have seen that. But I, I think I'm confusing it with another movie where... Uh, the guy's playing a game and he gets calls on a cell phone where he gets told to do stuff and if he doesn't do it, uh, yeah, that's 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 what happens. But it's it's that's what he's like. Oh, it's a game, haha! And then at the end, it gets it just gets more and more. Okay, yes, I up. have seen that. It's it that movie is actually really good. It's crazy. Okay, dope. Um. Man, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and admit right now. I don't know how I forgot Late Phases came out in 2014. I think it was when I was looking up my movies. I think it got listed under what it's now titled, which is that stupid Night of the Wolf name. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's how I missed it. Um, um, I've got it in my me. honorable mentions. Uh, Kenneth, what do you got? It Follows. It Follows was really... It, it, it follows was interesting when I when I first watched it. I was definitely a little blown away. It was not what I was expecting. I think uh, I think when it first came out, me and Jerry kind of fanboyed on it for a little bit when it first came out. I did not uh, like it. I, I really enjoyed it. It, it. the The social commentary that's involved in that, and how many different directions that you can go with how you analyze that movie, is insane. Especially when you really start getting in the rabbit hole of it. So I actually really enjoyed it. And then my other one uh, is The Babadook. Uh, I, that's another one where I was just like, holy nice. shit. Hey, I mean, hitting it with those critical darlings this year. I mean, The Babadook was a great fucking movie. I was surprised at, at how much I enjoyed it because I thought it was just going to be another one of those run of the mill or what, uh, you know, but the cinematography in it was fucking, it, it, it was really, really good. I liked it a lot. And so um, 
I, there was a lot to me. There was a lot of good movies that came out this year, and I was back and forth between a few of them. But those two were the those were the top for me for that year. Yeah, I love it. Follows. Uh, you can get really really deep on it. Um, I like the Babadook, but I can't rewatch it. The movie's just a little too annoying for me. <laughs> um, it is a hard watch that second time. That first time, you know, you're into it and everything. But as you watch it the second time, you're just like, oh, man, now that the initial shock of how good this is is, is gone, it's still a good movie, but holy shit, this is annoying. Mm-hmm. Just that kid and the woman, and, oh, my God, I just, whoo, boy, let me tell you. We're actually reviewing it on the next episode of Horror for Dummies, so I watched it last night, and I know exactly what you're talking about, Jerry. <laughs> it is. <laughs> If you just watch that movie once, keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and the Holy hell now I want to watch it again. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, it, uh, ooh, boy, just watch Reading Rainbow instead. I like that too. Um, okay, uh, Tim, 2014, what you got? <clears throat> All right. Uh, 2014 was actually a really difficult, hard year to pick for me. There was three films that were in contention for my top one, but my top film for that year was what we do in the shadows. And I know some people will say, well, that's a comedy, not a horror, but fuck you. It's a horror comedy. comedy. It's a horror comedy. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, This movie by far is my favorite horror comedy of all time. Better than Shaun of the Dead name. This one has made me laugh more times than any other film put together. Um, I love it from start to finish. I've watched it so many times. I, I'd love to know how many times I've seen it. Um, every line is just gold. It just works so well. Um, and the amount of laughs that I've get, I got, I got from this movie is just crazy. Um, so what we do in the shadows is my number one film for that year. Um, my number two, it's oh fuck. There was two films that I that can easily be number two but i'm just going to go and pick one um i'm going to pick a film called digging up the marrow um oh. Adam Green. what do you mean oh <laughs> i just do not understand man but okay oh okay. i'm so happy okay i, I mean my I, life but... is <laughs> what it needs oh. digging Ten up the marrow came and completed my soul I'm keen to know what you didn't like about it because this movie was awesome. It, yeah, documentary style um, from Adam Green. And this film, it scared the shit out of me in two different scenes. Like, made me actually freeze with fear. Um, I, I just love, I love the story. Um, I am struggling to remember the guy's name, the elder gentleman um, in it, but he just, he kills it and he plays his part so well. Um, I just, I love this film. It's really, really good. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I can agree. The story is, is pretty good. You know? Yeah. I think it was a lot better when Clive Barker wrote it, but, uh, you know, cause it's pretty much nightbreed from a found footage or documentary style perspective. <laughs> oh, <I've never laughs> yeah. Except like Boone's <laughs> not there fucking up everything for everyone. Sorry. It's this, it's pretty much the same thing we, with little differences here and there. But I guess Adam Green could say, Oh, it's an homage. Fuck that. Man. Well, no, it's, it's based off artwork of another guy. Yeah. Whatever. It's fucking Nightbreed. That's what it is. It's the same thing <laughs> I said about it in our podcast about it. It's the same well, thing. I mean, it, you know it, what? Was, it was worth I, watching the one time. I doubt uh, the, the artwork in it was fucking great. But other than that, I doubt I'll go back and watch it again. I will 100% take Digging Up the Marrow over Nightbreed every day of the week. You're a fucking... Whoa! Whoa. You're, I know. Statement. Uh, I would too. Yep, sorry. Fuck um, both of y'all. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> For me, now I know y'all think Digging Up the Marrow is going to be on mine, but uh, actually its premiere uh, in 2014 was only circuited and uh, it did not have a wide release till 2015, so spoilers. Oh, okay, uh, we'll sorry. see it there for me. Uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. 2014, uh, my first pick, uh, well, my second pick, because I always do my first of the year second, uh, is Starry Eyes. 
Ooh. I, I did yeah. not think I was going to like this movie, and then I watched it, and while it takes a little bit to to kind of get moving... It kicks that, you in the fucking face at the end of it. That fucking ending. Holy shit. <laughs> when shit goes down in this movie, it really goes down. It is fucking rough. <laughs> Holy shit. If you have not seen Starry Eyes... You need to watch it, and yes, I know the beginning will make you kind of go, oh, hurry up, but it pays off in fucking spades. Go watch that movie. I'm not even going to say anything else. Yeah, that movie starts off by giving you a little kiss on the lips and then rams its cock straight down your fucking throat, skeets in there, <laughs> and then hits you in the throat after it's done. Yeah. That yeah, movie's basically, fucking crazy. Uh what Kenneth did to me on my 21st birthday. Yeah. Um, so uh, my, my second movie uh, is a movie that I will also say none of y'all have probably seen. Uh, it is uh, Japanese and it is also by the same guy who directed Colt and uh, Nori the Curse, Koji Shirashi. And it is called A Record of Sweet Murderer. And it is a found footage movie that takes place 90% in one room. And I know you're sitting there going, God, that sounds fucking boring. Holy shit, is it not? It is about this guy who is a serial killer who uh, in, in South Korea who contacts a friend of his who's become a journalist and tells her to bring a Japanese cameraman and show up at this place, and she shows up, and as the story unravels, and you find out why he's doing everything, and then the uh, H.P. Lovecraft-like ending, oh man, this movie is so good. It is, it is not found footage, but considering that everything is from the one camera, it is found footage. But it doesn't play out like a found footage movie. It's just the fact that we're seeing everything from that camera. Um, it does not have the tropes of a found footage movie. It um, is entertaining the entire fucking way through. Uh, these characters are so fucking interesting and shot out. Especially when uh, two more people show up there. Uh, it is absolutely a fucking great film. And I highly recommend it. Um... It is honestly the director's best movie. Fuck Nori the Curse. A Record of Sweet Murderer is his best movie. Um, God, this movie's good. Whew. Okay, now that I'm done coming in my pants. Uh, Kenneth, what do you got for uh, some honorable mentions? Um, da -da -da, Late Phases was on there. Uh, Deliver Us from Evil. That was a movie that came out. It's like a d detective, you know, possession movie. I actually enjoyed it. Um, As above, so below. That Loved one was, it. Yeah, that one was good. Uh, Dead Snow Two. That was good. Oh, that was, yeah, <laughs> so good. Uh, Starry Eyes is in my uh, in mine. Uh, Oculus. I actually really enjoyed that. I liked Oculus too. Plus, she's fucking hot. Uh, the Taking of Deborah Logan. That was fantastic too. Yeah. Oh god! Yeah, that, that kind of surprised almost, me how much I enjoyed it actually. That one almost made it, but I had to give it to Starry Eyes. Yeah, then like I said, Starry Eyes was on there. And then my last of honorable mentions, Zom Beavers. Oh, shit. Zom right, Beavers this podcast was fucking is hilarious. Over. Thank you for uh, <laughs> joining us. I'm so glad we're ending now and never coming back. <laughs> Zom Beavers was so stupid that it was fucking great. I Check out it. our next horror coliseum, <laughs> Zom Beavers versus Black Sheep. <laughs> Actually... No, 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 Jerry. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, but then again, okay. Uh, 2015, uh, another year that I feel like there may be one movie that makes I, on I think there may. almost every list. I think and that there would may. be Digging Up the Marrow. Uh, <laughs> Jay, what do you got? Uh, first movie I have is the new instant classic Christmas movie, Krampus. Um, great effects, funny dialogue, fun story. I love the ending. I know some people don't like it, but I absolutely love the ending. Um, 
great monster design and creature design all around. It's just absolutely fantastic. It's, uh, like I said at the beginning, instant classic. Uh, great yeah. entry into Christmas horror, and I love everything about it. Can we all just take a minute to say how awesome this fucking movie is? Even if it's not your pick for the year, Krampus was still fucking amazing. I completely agree. Honestly, if it's if it's not your pick, you better tell me that, well, I didn't pick it because I think everyone else was going to pick it. So I was like, let me shout out something else. That's the only acceptable answer to that. And even then, I'm going to shame you. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah. Uh, movie number two was Howl. This is another werewolf movie. Uh, this one takes place on a train. A uh, train breaks down. Um and a group of train passengers are subject to being terrorized by werewolves. Um, I think it's a, it's a British film. And again, great practical werewolf effects, uh, good gore, fun action. It's it's a great watch. So if you haven't seen it, try and hunt it down. I think it, I watched it on Netflix or Amazon uh, when I watched it and then I bought the Blu-ray. Um, but it's definitely a good werewolf flick if that's what you're in the mood for. How would be my top five werewolf films of all time? Wow. I love it. Yeah. I have not seen it. I guess I got to check it out. Oh, I'm yes. actually, I'm making a list of movies that y'all are saying <laughs> that I haven't seen <laughs> that I want to go back and watch. So that that one just, I'll just put that one on there. Okay. Uh, Kenneth, uh, 2015, what you got? All right, Krampus. That yeah. I mean, you know, that one, that one was fucking fantastic. And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do this just one time. I could not choose between the other two, so I said fuck it and put them both on there. And it is We Are Still Here, which I thought that was fucking great. I nice. bought it right when it came out. That movie's a, a great haunted house movie. And then Deathgasm. I love Deathgasm. I couldn't choose between the two of them, so I was like, fuck it. I think it's an easy choice. You just drop Deathgasm. No, I'm not. Deathgasm was great. <laughs> you just uh, don't choose Deathgasm. <laughs> It's it's that simple. Well, but, what's what's your problem with Deathgasm? You just don't like it. I just I, I don't really care for metal, so I just fuck with Kenneth. <laughs> uh, fun fun it's... fact about Deathgasm: uh, the main guy was the Green Power Rangers on the RPM se- season. I don't know nice. what RPM is, but okay, yes, sir. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Tim, it is now up to you. Are you going to continue the circle with Krampus? Uh, you're damn right I am. Fucking <laughs> Krampus is number one. Um, I am a huge fan of Michael Doherty. Trick or Treat is one of my all-time favorite films, uh, and this one is almost just as good. I mean, if you pause this film at any moment, you could, fr- uh, in my opinion, you could frame it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, the creatures are fucking unreal. The story is great. And the twist at the end, uh, I loved it because it sets up like it's a dream, which would be the worst thing ever, but then it doesn't. And I love that twist ending. So yeah, Krampus is definitely my favorite film of that year. Um, my second favorite film <laughs> is Deathgasm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God damn it, Tim. <laughs> nice. Uh, I, I, am, I am a metal fan. So this one just hit me. Um, and I, I love it. Hell awesome yeah. practical make it effects. Up for, make it up for digging up Romero. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. Speaking of digging up the marrow, for 2015, <laughs> uh, digging up the fucking marrow. Holy shit, this movie is goddamn amazing. I love it. I love everything about it. One of uh, my most disappointing moments in my life was doing a podcast with these two cunts and me being super hyped about this movie and them both going, eh, it was okay. Apparently, I need to do a review of this with Tim because Tim understands things because he's a man of culture, unlike these two fucking swine. Yeah, the man of culture. It. I just don't love it. This man and, of culture that you're talking about that sided with me on Deathgasm. You know what? Sometimes Tim makes mistakes. He wouldn't have chose Deathgasm if if he would have known that Digging at the Marrow technically counts for 2015, not 2014. <laughs> he made a mistake. It's okay. You know, I forgive him, unlike you hating on Digging Up the Marrow, which is spectacular. Yes, I suck Adam Green's dick. I know. I fucking love Adam Green. Everything I've seen of his, I fucking love. Um, 
even though I've yet to watch Frozen. I was just going to say, watch Frozen. It's fucking terrible. You know what? I got to watch Frozen because maybe I'm going to love it and then I'm going to be like, I, let's fucking fight, Kenneth. I liked Frozen. What did you hate about it? Oh, no, 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 we're we're not. Generic. You, were, you, were, you, were, you were stepping up, Tim. You were All right, stepping Tim, up, Tim, <laughs> if we do Frozen on the podcast, yeah. we, will tr- we will try to figure out a way to get you to do it with us. Right. Oh, hell yeah. I'd we love will, to I'll have even to manipulate any time that I have so that way we can work around your future schedule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you're like a day faster than us. So I'll work yeah. around it so that way you can be on We it. will record oh, awesome. late on a Friday night so it's Saturday morning for you. Or <laughs> or, or, or whatever works. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, we'll do it. And then I'll go into it because, I, I mean, dude, I, I really, really hate that movie. He hates this fucking oh. movie. I mean, okay. like, it's the bane of my horror <clears throat> existence. It is. I hate it. Wow. What, <laughs> what, um, uh, God damn it. What's that M. Night Shanahan movie I hate? The All Village? The Village, yes. Yeah. It's what, what The Village is to me, Frozen is to him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's my, and, happy, it's my happy death day. Yes. <laughs> okay. I get you. Uh, yeah. Um. And is Jay's relationship with cookies. I, I was going to say, I don't know if I have a, a singular horror movie that I hate with a burning passion like that. Wow. Yeah, see, now I'm curious of why Tim hates Happy Death Day. I don't think it's the greatest movie He ever, doesn't like time cookies. loops. We've already gone over this. <laughs> but I'm, I'm curious. Okay. I, I just think on... it's fucking childish. Okay. Yeah, it's not the greatest. Back on topic. Uh, so, yeah, I fucking love Digging Up the Marrow. Um, it is Nightbreed, except uh, you take out Boone fucking up everything That's and That's instead good. you get the lovable Adam Green. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the Evil Dead of 2015, we have Krampus. Yeah. Uh, holy shit, I love this movie. I love it more than Trick or Treat. Ooh, I, I, wow. I think Krampus is he the superior really like movie. Trick or, treat, uh, Trick or Treat's okay. I just like Krampus better. Um Krampus is just so much fun, uh, so well casted, uh, so well fucking written. I love the ending. The ending, uh, I know people are like, oh, well, that's bullshit. And I'm like, do you understand how dark that ending is? That's yeah. so Holy good. Fucking, fucking shit. It was perfect. Um, yeah, it is so perfect. I know a lot of people go, oh, I fucking hate the ending. I'm like, dude, if you think about that ending, it is one of the darkest endings ever and it's disguised disguised as a happy ending. Yep. But it's mm-hmm. not. Uh, so, whew, boy. I got the vapors over here. Um, <laughs> it's it's that good. Uh, okay, we move on to 2016. Jay, go ahead. All Honorable right, mentions? we're back into... Uh... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Honorable mentions, Kenneth. Go ahead. Oh, I've, only got two, I've, I've only got two. Um, uh, Crimson... Digging up the marrow. <laughs> no. Uh... <laughs> Crimson Peak, which I actually really enjoyed. I thought it, I thought the cinematography in it was beautiful, and then uh, the Devil's Candy. I thought the Devil's Candy was a really really good movie. Wow, I can't believe the Devil's Candy didn't make your list. No nah, man. Okay. I mean, so but th- those are my honorable mentions. Devil's Candy was really good, but like I said, those those other two that I had to force myself and just throw them in there as three. That w- that was the thing. I couldn't. Yeah. Is it because Ethan Embry didn't get high off pop brownies and watch gore music videos? No, I think it was because Ethan Embry's wig looked fucking terrible. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Uh, that's 100% fair. All right. Um, but the rest Jay, of the movie was solid. <laughs> yeah. Jay, 2016, sir, what do you got? All right. So first up, I have uh, the director of the Evil Dead remake's follow-up film, Don't Breathe. This is a home invasion movie with a twist. Um, some kids, well, they're young adults, break into a blind vet's house because they hear there's a large amount of cash and they think stealing from a blind guy will be easy. A uh, blind guy has some secrets of his own and is really, really adjusted to being blind and is not as easy prey as they think. And the tables kind of get turned. Um, I really enjoyed this. Uh, there is a unbroken shot when they first get into the house. Uh, that's absolutely gorgeous, and I am a sucker for unbroken shots in movies, uh, and I absolutely loved uh, loved it. I like the action. Uh, I love uh, what's his name, Stephen Lang, 
right? That's the actor. I um, think so. He's he's really good in the stuff that I've seen him in. Uh, I'm excited to see if the sequel ever gets made that they keep talking about. Uh, but overall, it's a, it's a great movie uh, with a good mid movie twist and a uh, a predictable finale. Uh, but second movie is Train to Busan, a Korean zombie movie. Uh, shot really well, really good story, great effects. Um, it's it's rare if I run into somebody who doesn't like this movie, who enjoys zombie movies. Um, and there's a sequel coming out very soon that I'm excited for that seems to take more of a Mad Max approach to a zombie apocalypse, which should be fun, um, which is kind of a change of pace from the uh, this, this one's more claustrophobic uh, feeling of being assaulted by zombies. So it'll be cool to see the um, the contrast there in those two movies. Yeah, I got to say, my biggest sin of the 2010s is that I have not seen Train to Busan. It's pretty <gasps> good, man. I just watched it the first time like a week ago. Oh, oh. <laughs> funny. I bought it blind. People in horror groups were talking about it. I saw the Blu-ray at Walmart for like 12 bucks uh, the week it came out, and I was like, shit, I'll buy it. Bought yeah, it, no, the, watched the, it, really enjoyed like, it. Um, uh, I watched the Philip DeFranco show uh religiously and like any chance he gets to bring that movie up he brings it up i really like philly d yeah that's the news guy on youtube right yeah yes okay yeah Yeah. i like him i watch him religiously yeah Um, jerry got me into watching his shit man i really especially since he's very unbiased which is good yes he's very good about being unbiased and when he is biased he points it out Mm -hmm. um so but you know this isn't uh kill the youtube show (laughs) So we move on <laughs> to Kenneth. Okay, I'm gonna start off. Train with Psalms actually one of the honorable mentions, and like I said, I watched it like a week ago. It was really good. Um, so Jerry, I wanna, I want, I wanna see if you can do this real quick. See if you can guess what my first one for 2016 is. If you're asking me specifically, I'm gonna say Shin Godzilla. <laughs> no, that's not that's not one of the ones. For Hush. The... Nope. All right. Avoid. You know, I still haven't watched that. God damn it. Go home. <laughs> the Witch. Oh, fuck that movie. Fuck, Ugh, get off this shit. Bad movie. That was so my, that's my awful. first one for 2016. I, I thought it was great. I thought it was uh, had awesome cinematography. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the way they did it as a period piece was really, really good. Um, I actually, I, I, I really fucking enjoyed it. And, uh, if you want to know how much I enjoyed it, you can go back and listen to one of our podcasts on it. I can't remember what number it was because episode three, we talk about the prowler as our review. And then we have a discussion <laughs> on the witch. Yeah. Hey, sorry. I can't oh, remember fuck, that. Man. Yeah. That's a blast from the past. That was a lot of episodes ago and, uh, I'm, I'm a lazy fuck, so I can't remember. And then uh, uh, my second one was Don't Breathe. I thought nice. that movie was fucking great. I was I'm... blown away by it and surprised that how good it was. And uh, I'm assuming that the guy that Jay said that he liked was uh, the the blind guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't he in Avatar? Yes. Yes, he was. One. Yeah. <laughs> That's a well, ripped Avatar old dude. Avatar Night Shyamalan Avatar? No, Avatar is in uh, James Cameron. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's... yeah. He's in VFW as well. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I really, I actually really like that dude too. But don't breathe. I think it was good. I think it was a, I think it was a good follow up to Evil Dead. Um, you know, it, I mean, it's not, you know, for for him to just kind of break out with Evil Dead and then come out with that after it as a good follow up. I think he did a good job. I mean, he's not Jordan Peele with us and are coming out after Get Out, but it still was a really, really good movie. So. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay, the witch sucks. Uh, Tim, <laughs> what do you got for 2016? Tim's gonna have the witch on there now. Oh, uh, I kind of wish I did now. <laughs> uh, 2016, in my opinion, was the best year of this decade. There were so many good movies that came out, yeah. but the but my favorite movie by far uh, is Train to Busan. This nice. movie was just fucking phenomenal and has now reached its way into my top 10 favorite films of all time um if i just i love it it's um it's fun it's emotional the scene at the end always makes me ball out in tears um i cannot say enough good things about this movie it's it's my favorite zombie movie since shit i don't know when day of the dead maybe 
Um, I'd put it up there with the, the Romero trilogy. That's how good this movie is. Um, I love it. I love Train to Busan. Um, my second one is, and this was another one that I had two films uh, to toss up for, but I'm going to go with one that I don't think anyone will have even in honorable mentions. <laughs> and and some people, you, you can also um, say that this movie is not exactly horror, but I say it is, and that's The Greasy Strangler. Um, <laughs> this movie is quotable as fuck. It's funny. It's dis- disgusting, disturbing. It's gross, but it's rewatchable like crazy. I just love The Greasy Strangler. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie. I, I, I definitely hear it's funny. I definitely agree that it's horror because I always see it in the horror groups and it does yeah. pass the IMDb horror test, um, which if you don't know the IMDb horror test, IMDb puts the top three genres of a film uh, to categorize it. And um, Greasy Strangler is comedy horror. So it's only two ah, genres good. and horrors in there. Um, now the IMDb test is not 100% accurate all the time but it is a a good test um that's cool but i i have not seen that movie so i can't really speak much on it give give it a go it it's fucking gross um don't watch it while eating um but yeah it's 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 an experience it's it's really i'm not a grossed out guy which is weird because i really like japanese splatter films like, uh, okay. I'm fine when it's blood, but I'm not a fan of it being like pus, you know, I, like Yeah, well I it's, don't like, it's not it's not blood. <laughs> I'll put it this way. I don't like Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, okay. So you might not like the Greasy Strangler then. So Le- yeah. okay. Let me just say this. The first time I watched the Greasy Strangler, I I turned it off and I walked away and I thought, fuck that movie. What did I fucking watch? But then I <laughs> It just kept playing in my head over and over and over. Um, and I had to go. I went back and watched it and I fell in love with it. So, I mean, it's not for everyone, but it, I enjoy it. So, Gotcha. Okay. Um, so for 2016 for me, uh, a movie that was the first time uh, we did a listener request on the podcast with Hush. I love Hush. It is so smart uh, with the woman being deaf uh, and the guy uh, fucking with her all night. It is just so fucking good. Um, This is an early Flanagan movie and he knocks it out of the park. I absolutely adore this movie. Um, The next one is probably one of my favorite favorite indie movies of all time and that's the void um i love cult films i love john carpenter's the thing put them together and you've got the void and it's fucking wonderful it's awesome i i I would love to see another movie come out uh that's involved with it whether it deals with the cult whether it deals with what happens after the movie like i would I don't give a fuck if you make a movie that's literally just about the cop who has to look at everything and try to figure out what the fuck happened. <laughs> Do it and I'll watch it. Um, oh, man, so good. And um, I will say I, I have an honorable mention for 2016 uh, with Shin Godzilla. Technically, Shin Godzilla does pass my test for what a Godzilla movie can be horror. But it, it's so much more a political drama that I decided to leave it off the list and I just wanted to give it an honorable mention because it is a very devastating movie. Uh, it is a oh, fantastic good, movie. If I would have counted it, I would have just said that it was... Uh, I would have just only done Shin Godzilla. I would have just chosen it twice. So <laughs> it, it's that fucking good. Fair enough. Um, yeah, if you want a political drama... Uh, what a government would do would actually do if a giant monster attacked a city this is the fucking movie it's wonderful so uh, Kenneth what else you got Um, let's see Blair Witch I thought that was pretty good for the year uh, The Conjuring 2 um, The Forest 
Hush was on there. Uh, Morgan, which I don't know if y'all seen that. I actually thought it was really good. That was uh, okay. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Shen Godzilla. Is that the Schwarzenegger movie? Uh-uh. No. no. Oh. Uh, Shen Godzilla, I've actually got that on there. And then the last one was Train to Busan. Gotcha. All right, we move on to 2017, where I expect to have a uh, another Evil Dead tackle uh, almost all the list. So with that, Jay, what do you got? Uh, my first movie is one that I've, I've talked about ad nauseum uh, when it first came out, um, is Get Out. Uh, it made its way into my top ten, as people know from when we did our top ten of all time episode. I love everything about this movie. I love that every time I watch it, I find something new. Um, I love the acting. I love the little things that in the background. I like the plot. I just everything. Everything about this movie, I just absolutely love. Uh, the, the social commentary is like spot on, um, and it's such an amazing first entry into the world of horror by Jordan Peele, and it's just just absolutely fantastic. And I can't speak its its praises enough. Um, Second movie I have is The Void, which I think is the one that's probably going to make the uh, the rounds this this round. Um, you said The Void? Yeah. That's what I had in 2016. Well, I have it for 2017. Wait, you think The Void's going to be the movie that makes the rounds this year? It, it Get Out's what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Well, I thought everyone loved The Void. Yeah, I used what you told me to. The end, the, the bottom of the page says its release date is April 7th, 2017. Yeah, this this might be my fuck up. Uh, yep, 2017. Yep, but I fucked that that's up okay. myself. Hey, hey, it happens, man. I I gave a description for a completely wrong movie earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Um, I just didn't think people like Get Out as much as I do. Uh, but yeah, The Void. I absolutely love The Void. Uh, like Jerry said last time, it's it's fucking fantastic. The the gore, the the effects just everything is is so so good but yeah i need a sequel i need a sequel explaining things that would be Shit, awesome now i could have moved the void to 2017 and had shin godzilla in 2016 damn you damn fucked it. up dog fuck <laughs> all right well kenneth what do you got get out yeah uh, knew it yeah i mean it was fucking great it was awesome uh pretty much what jay said um and then my second one for that year was it, the first it. I actually really Wait, enjoyed. Wait, what? Yeah, that was you fun. you didn't like it when it came out. I, I I've changed though since I went for it. I actually kind of like the second one better. But uh, when it first came out, I didn't. And then I got to thinking about it, and I've watched it quite a few times since then. And yeah, that's my uh, that's my second one for that year. And it was a toss up between that and Alien Covenant, and I actually chose it. Holy shit, guys! I gotta say, I am so surprised because Kenneth was was the first naysayer I talked to about that movie when everyone was like, I fucking love it. Kenneth was just like, yeah, I don't know. It kind of sucked. I didn't, I wasn't, it didn't live up to the hype. Wow. So, so Kenneth came around to it. Okay. Yep. Well, God damn. Um, and it was, it was a real hard call. Like I sat there and I thought about it for a while, man, between that and alien covenant, it was a really, really hard call between the two of them. But, you know, Alien Covenant was good. But the thing about it was, as a follow-up to Prometheus, it Alien Covenant just did not quite do it for me as a follow-up. Because I actually wanted a follow-up to Prometheus and not a direct into Alien movie. That's fair. Um, okay, Tim, 2017. What do mm-hmm. you got? Uh, my first pick is It. Um, I, I love this movie. I'm one of those guys that just said nothing but praise about this movie. Um, the kids and the, the, ke- the chemistry between the kids is great. The, the clown is fucking awesome. I just had a blast with this movie. I really like it. Um, my number two pick is not get out is actually 47 meters down. And here's why I watched this movie when it came out as in the deep, uh, which is a different title, and it had a different ending to 47 Meters Down, um, much more darker ending, and I just I loved it. And when it came out at 47 Meters Down, I was a little disappointed how they changed it, but I still really enjoy this movie. I'm a shark kind of guy, um, much like Jerry. I really love my shark movies, as long as they're serious. I can't do none of the Sharknado stuff. 
Um, but 47 meters down, this one just, yeah, blew me out of the water. Um, and talking about last year with the shallows, that was on par with my second favorite film of that year. Um, I just picked the greasy strangler, but yeah, those two movies are probably my favorite shark films underneath the jaws franchise. Um, but yeah, I just, I love them. So they're, they're my two picks. All right. Wow. I, I thought Get Out was going to be a clean sweeper. Yeah, uh, sorry. It does, it does got, not join Krampus and Evil Dead. I've got a, I've got a question. Um, yeah. All right. For In the Deep. Mm-hmm. Okay. How long before 47 meters down did In the Deep come out? It was like um, a whole year. Yeah. Yeah, because it came... Are these it, separate movies or did they... No, it's the same movie. It came out on DVD as uh, the In the Deep. And then they recalled it, repackaged it, and put it out theatrically as 47 meters down. Huh. But yeah. the ending is different. Yes. What's the ending to In the Deep? Don't say it. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Spoilers, Jay. I, yeah. I want to know. Uh, because Jerry, now, Jerry, I'll now tell you what, I'll watch the first I'll, cut. Um, I'll tell you after, after we finish recording. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay. Um... So moving on to me, uh, obviously I have Get Out. Um, I, you just can't deny that movie. Um, it is one of the smartest films I've ever seen. The attention to detail is fucking Kubrick level. Um, and uh, as a first time directorial debut, to come out swinging that hard is a very rare thing. Um, but goddamn, did Jordan Peele do it. So con fucking grats um next up one that will not be on everyone's list uh well, but uh, i love it we go back to japan meatball machine kodoku <laughs> uh, i goddamn love this movie it's directed by uh yoshiro yoshihiro nishimura who if you've watched a Japanese splatter film, he most likely did the special effects. Uh, he also directed Tokyo uh, Gore Police. Ah, uh, but fucking uh, love Tokyo Gore Police. Yeah, but he did the special effects for the original Meatball Machine, though he did not direct it. He did the special effects for like Suicide Club. He he he. If it's a Japanese horror movie, he probably was involved in the special effects. Um, he is kind of like the man over there he's the tom savini of japanese horror movies good um no so he find so he got to direct the sequel meatball, uh, meatball machine kodoku and it is just as crazy as the first movie if not even fucking more if you like shout out splatter films uh check this one out it is a great uh you know machine meshing into human flesh uh, to create just the weirdest shit out there. Um, you will not be disappointed. It is so fucking good. I do believe uh, that it and the first movie are on Amazon Prime, I think. So do yourself a favor. Watch them. Uh, they are just so much fucking fun. It is It is just a goddamn blast. Um, so I, I, I had to fucking do it. I had to put that on here. Uh, and give it to you people because that movie just does not get enough love. Uh, Kenneth, what do you got for honorable mentions? Um, I've only got a few this time around. I've got uh, 1922, uh, Alien Covenant, and Mayhem. Oh, I do love Mayhem. Mayhem is a lot of fun. Oh, my God, I love that movie. Um, okay, 2018. We're, we're, we're on our second to last year. Woo-hoo. Jay, what do you got? All right, we're back to super mainstream with this guy. Uh, first movie is Hereditary. Um, this movie gut punched me emotionally more than any movie I had watched that year. Um, it hit really close to home, which made it all the more effective for me. Because um, if you take out the supernatural stuff, it's just about a dysfunctional family. <laughs> um <laughs> And I grew up in one of those. And some of the scenes are just, like, so fucking spot on. Um, I I literally 
cried with Kayla afterwards. She didn't see it with me, but I, I met up with her for lunch afterwards. And she just held me while I cried. No fucking joke. It fucked me up in my head for quite some time after it was over. Sweetie, what are you wanting your sub? <laughs> meatballs. Just give me meatballs, okay? No, we, we were at fucking Sonic. So it was a cheeseburger and like they had these pretzel twists. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, I love it. The acting is phenomenal. Uh, it like Get Out is is lots of little hidden things in the background that make it uh, more impactful as it goes. Um, the few scenes of intense uh, violence really hit hard, uh, and it's all built up and earned really well. Um, but yeah, it just I absolutely love it. I own it, and I probably won't watch it very often because of of how in my head it gets. Uh, Halloween 2018 was the other one. Um, just a great uh, a. a Probably my favorite Halloween sequel, to be honest with you, um, after the original. Uh, and everyone knows that Rob Zombie's Halloween is my favorite, but it just it felt like a better sequel than all the other ones that we got, to be honest with you. That's fair, even though Halloween 3 is the best movie in the franchise. Halloween 3 is fantastic. Um, uh, it is absolutely fantastic, but I think I like this one a little bit more. Well, you're wrong. Okay. Um... <laughs> Kenneth, what do you got for 2018? Hereditary. Nice. Hereditary was a fucking great movie. And uh, I actually really enjoyed the supernatural aspects of it. Um, I liked where they went went with it. That scene right in the middle that we all know what it was and Dan yeah. didn't know that it was coming. I was like, holy fuck. Um, so that was really good. Um, and then uh, my other one is uh, Summer of 84. That oh, is a fantastic movie. fucking movie. That movie. I really enjoyed Summer of 84. I mean, you know, uh, it, I, I guess movies kind of like that have, you know, a special place in my heart for some reason. I actually really love the movies where people from across the street think that, goddamn, their neighbors are killing people, and then it turns out their neighbors are actually killing people. So it's like, yep, I actually really enjoyed it. So, uh, so yeah, that was my second one, and it you know there was there were some really good ones this year, and that was my that was my second one. Gotcha. All right, uh, Tim, two thousand eighteen. <clears throat> two thousand eighteen, my pick was Halloween. Uh, I remember when I first saw this, um, I came out with mixed thoughts. I uh, wasn't really on board, but then after thinking about it, it soon hit my number one spot. Um, I love it. Um, I won't say it's the best sequel in Halloween because that goes to Halloween three, um, but yes, it is <laughs> it is the best sequel of the Michael Myers saga for me. Um, I I just love it. I think it's great. Um, it's not perfect. There are some decisions that they did that I still question, but I like it for what it is. Um, my second favorite film is another film that many people can say is not a horror. I, uh, I definitely class it as a horror, and it's a movie called Searching, uh, starring John Cho. This one oh, is yeah. this one fucked me up hard, man. Um, I'm I'm a father of two kids, so this one, yeah, really got to me emotionally and scared me, man, because this is like this is real. What happens in this movie is real, and and can happen to anyone and uh, really bothered me. So it really got under my skin. Um, it's all done in the perspective of like a computer laptop, um, like unfriended movies like those, uh, which I, which I enjoy. Um, so yeah, this I, one just, yeah. Unfriended one and unfriended two dark web, both almost made uh, my list for, uh, I think it's 2014 and uh, dark web came out this year, 2018 uh, nice. They both almost made my list. I fucking yeah. adore those movies. That, yeah, I, I agree. Everyone seems to give them shit, but I, I really enjoy them. I like the way I'll they're have done. To give them a watch, then. I've kind of been a oh, god, mm. so good. Even Kenneth liked uh, Unfriended. Yeah, I mean, it's actually one of my honorable. Dark Web is actually one of my honorable mentions. Um, wow. And uh, when uh, the other one. When when I noticed that this one was from this year, I meant to go back and look at what year the first one came out and uh, put it on as an honorable mention, and uh, I forgot. But, uh, yeah, that's actually one of my honorable mentions from this year because I, I don't know what it is, man. There's just something in, in, in the way that everything works with us technologically now that 
seeing a movie from that perspective is just kind of eerie to me. And, yeah, and, yeah. and how much, because we're so ingrained with like our phones and our computers and stuff like that, how well the tension can be built watching it from this perspective. I was so surprised in both movies at how much tension was built in me and how much anxiety I had watching these movies. And all you're doing is watching what somebody from somebody's perspective, looking at a fucking computer screen. Yeah. It was yeah, great. It. I, yeah. I love them both. And I, that was enough. The searching was another one that I added to the list of a movie to watch, you know, of things that I haven't seen. Cause I'm interested in it now. I loved it, man. It was it was actually my on par with Halloween as my number one film of that year, but um, Halloween just creeped a bit over the line. But yeah, Searching is phenomenal. I love it. I'm check yeah. it out. I'm a big fan of internet horror. Um, yeah. So anything that can kind of use the internet, uh, you know, whether it's Unfriended or uh, uh, Cairo, aka Pulse. Mm-hmm. Um, it just fuck. I just love it. Uh, same with like Suicide Club using the internet. It is just one thing that I just absolutely adore is internet horror. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, coming to me. Uh, I gotta talk about a movie that you know what. A lot of people are gonna be like Jerry. This year had so many goddamn amazing films. That you could have chose from. So why did you choose this? And my response is, bitch, it was fun. Sometimes I just want a really fun horror movie, so I got to give it up to Puppet Master the Littlest Right. I, I knew, fucking love that movie. I so. knew you were going to pick that one. Holy shit. I fucking love this movie. It is so much fun. It, it is just a blast. It is the It is the best Puppet Master movie, hands fucking down. Um, and maybe that's because it, it was not done by Full Moon and Charles Band. It was done by other people. And it's just so fucking good. It's so entertaining. I love all the characters. Uh, a lot of the puppet designs are just fucking fun. And uh, we still get some of our classic puppets. And if you just want to fucking sit down with a couple of, you know, beers with your friends and put on a horror movie to just fucking have fun to... Puppet Master the Lilith Reich has your fucking back. You need to watch it. Yes. Um, And my favorite movie of 2018, I just saw within two or three weeks. For the first time, just saw it. And it blew me away so much that it is, it is my favorite film of 2018. Um... It is a little-known gem called Cat Sick Blues. I still haven't seen this one yet. Oh, my God. What a weird and disturbing, uh, to, to quote one of Kenneth's favorite lines, shot the fuck out movie. <laughs> it is a fucking blast. Um, it, it does not... The way it starts out is 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 not the way it ends. It is absolutely insane, and it, it, it if you're um if you're a cat lover, then yeah. you need to watch this movie because it's basically uh, about um someone dealing with the grief of losing a cat, but. There is a cat death in the movie, so I know that turns off mm. some people, but it is not, um, it's, it's, I'll put it this way, it didn't hit me as hard as, say, like, um, Lords of Chaos with the cat hanging, um, okay. in there. It, it, it wasn't that bad, so. Alright, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna take this out. Yeah, so... Catsick Blues, I so highly recommend going and watching this movie. It is absolutely amazing. Um God, go fucking go fucking see it. <laughs> Ugh. Um w- with that being said, uh 
Kenneth, do you have some honorable mentions? Uh, yes, I do. Um, unfriended. Oh, Kenneth. Yes. For why you should watch Cat Sick Blue, giant prosthetic cat penis strap on. <laughs> Those what? exist. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm I'm down. I got it on the list. <laughs> All right. Um, going back. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> that's it end of episode we're not doing 2019 have a good night yeah give me a sec <laughs> let me bring myself reel myself back all right all right so i got unfriended dark web on here halloween goosebumps haunted halloween which i thought was great nice uh hellraiser judgment i actually liked it um strangers 2 upgrade a quiet place um, and uh, Truth or Dare. I think those are probably all my honorable mentions for this year. I thought everyone hated Truth or Dare. I enjoyed it. Which Truth or Dare? Because there's like three of them. The one that came out in 2018. Yeah, yep. well, yeah, there's like three of them. Uh, what is it, Blumhouse? <coughs> um, I can't remember. So there's the Blumhouse one, and then there's also the, the Haunted House one that came out on Netflix around the same time. Mm-hmm. Is it the one with the phone filter that makes the smiles look weird? I think I'm not sure. Now, now I'm house. now I'm all fucking confused. <laughs> Either way, that's it, all right. It was the truth or dare that came out in 2018. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Yes. Okay. Blumhouse. Let's. Blumhouse. Yeah, okay. that's what I thought. I thought everyone hated that movie. Yeah, I don't um, like that. Um. Okay. Let's move into our last year, 2019. Uh, I, I don't know where this year is going to go, because uh, holy shit, what a year of movies. Oh, such a good year. Um, I had trouble. I, I uh, Technically, I have three, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, Jay, go ahead. Uh, uh, first movie up is Midsummer. Um, it's the same director's head, hereditary, Ari Aster. Um, this one didn't hit me as much emotionally as Hereditary did, but it is such a gorgeously shot movie, and it's so rare for a horror movie to be shot almost entirely during daytime like this one is mm-hmm. and still pull off that creepy vibe. And I just I loved everything about it. I loved um, the acting. Uh, Florence Poe is becoming one of my favorite actresses. Just it, fighting with my family was really good. Midsummer was really good. I haven't seen Little Women. Um, Did but you I'm know like, that that she's dating Zach Braff from Scrubs? I know now. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. There was some drama because people were like, "He's like twenty something years your yeah. senior. Why are you dating him?" And I'm uh, like, "Why is she, she dating can. me? Shut I can the be twenty fuck years up. her senior." <laughs> Well, you're not from Scrubs. No, so. I'm not from Scrubs. You, you are a Scrub. That's true. There's a difference. And they don't want no Scrubs. Because the Scrub is a guy. She can't get no love from. Yeah, uh, hanging out the passenger side of his best friend, Ryan, trying yeah. to holler at me. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, the, the imagery is gorgeous. The the roots in old folk tradition from these, these cultures that are some of them being real. Um, are just great, uh, and I just I liked it. I loved the movie. Um, secondly, I have a, on a completely different end of the spectrum. I have Ready or Not, which is just the balls to the wall fun uh, killathon. Um, that it's just so good, so good. And the ending is fucking. The ending took me by surprise, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Everyone should watch this movie because it's just it's just a fun I- movie all around. I need to finish it. I watched half of it and then I had to go do something and I never got around to finishing it. But Oof. what I saw, I really liked and I love Samara weaving. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was really good. So, all right, Kenneth, what do you got? Um, uh, 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 first one is Dr. Sleep. Nice. I actually, so, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if Dr. Sleep would have been as good if it didn't have so many throwbacks to The Shining, to the movie version of The Shining. He so, had such a hard task of having to make a, make a movie based on a book that was a sequel to another book, but also be a sequel to a movie when the movie and the book had nothing to do. It was such a hard task that he had against uh, ahead of him. And I think he did fantastic. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if but like I said, if it hadn't have been as so much of a mesh for the for the first movie, like you know, uh, when you see Danny go back to the Overlook and all the rest of that, if it hadn't have been for all that stuff, it may not have been as good. It's almost like. Um, it's almost like if you actually took Ready Player One and you took all of the pop culture shit out of it, would it have been a good movie? Mm. Mm, that's a good that's fucking a good, question. Yeah. No. I, I will say <laughs> this. Uh, it is a good film for, in, in the realm of Stephen King adaptations. Because let's be honest, it is not easy to adapt a Stephen King book and Stephen King adaptations do not have the best movies. That's true. Right. I mm-hmm. mean, there's some of them that are really good and some of them not, but I actually enjoyed Dr. Sleep. I thought it was really, really good. Um, and then my other one is uh, Ready or Not. Ready or Not was fucking awesome. We went and saw it in a theater, and the end of it was such a surprise, and it was a welcome surprise. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I did not expect it. I didn't either. And I was like, when it happened, I was like, wow. I was Fuck like, oh. yeah. Okay. Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sweet. So, uh, so yeah, that was that was my second one. I couldn't, I could not give it the praise that it deserved. Ready or not, it was really good. All right, I gotta finish it. You Fuck, do, I man. Gotta, I gotta start. I gotta finish it. All right. Um, <laughs> with that, we move on to Tim, 2019. What do you got? Uh, for me, this one goes to um, Lords of Chaos. Uh, this one is just a great story, but then you've got the the gore and the viciousness, uh, which is, oh, fucking hell. Some of the most brutally insane things I've ever seen on film. Um, I, I just talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That, that whole scene there is so hard to watch, yet so good, so well acted. That- yeah, uh, th- that line uh, when I first watched it, I immediately grabbed my phone and took a note down that said, "Kill the cast intro." I just talked. Yeah, I, and I remember now our doing intro, that. <laughs> our intro ha- has different clips, and it, and like that. That's the quote that made me make that intro. I remember you doing that, and I thought, "Fuck, that's such a good idea." Now I can't do it because Jerry already already thought <laughs> we can totally do it. No. I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person, and I know I'm not the only person because there, there's quite a few people who have intros with music and movie quotes. Yeah. About the only difference is, is mine is ten seconds long, and most other people have minute long ones. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, man, this I love this movie from start to finish. I'm I'm not a huge fan of of um, uh, black metal, but oh god, no, it's unlistenable. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. But um yeah, I just I just fell in love with this movie. Um as soon as I saw it back in February, it was my favorite the whole year. Um my second favorite for the whole time it was originally Child's Play. I just love that one. But I rewatched The Nightingale the other night. Um have any of you heard about The Nightingale? Uh-uh. I remember I people talking it. about it, but I never it. saw it. Okay, so it's the follow up to Jennifer Kent's Babadook. Uh and this one this one can be argued that it's not a horror movie, but much like Lords of Chaos, it's got scenes in it that are just insanely brutal. Um, the whole movie is just oh, phenomenal. It's uh, superbly acted. Uh, the set designs, it's, it's um, oh, what's the word for it? Um, a, a look back into the olden days. Um, it, it's a lot like the Oh, witch. it's a period piece. Period piece. That's That's the way. Uh, yeah, it's a period piece of old um, Australia back in like the 1800s. And yeah, the set designs are just insane. The story is just really good. It goes like two and a half hours, but it feels like a 40 minute movie just because yeah, everything that happens is really well done. And I'm not a huge fan of Australian films, uh, but this one really, really got to me. So The Nightingale is my second film. All right. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, that year that Kenneth cheated and did too, I'm going to end up doing the same thing for 2019. You cheat, bastard. Um, I didn't know we could cheat. Uh, <laughs> we can't. Um, but I literally could I, could... I sat here with three films and could not delete one. Um, so I want to talk about the one that uh, was the... As soon as I was doing 2019, before I even looked up movies, this was on the list. And that is Crawl. 
Everyone nice. knows I fucking love creature features, and uh, Crawl is just so fucking good. It takes it serious, and it's brutal. It gives us great suspense. Uh, it has a fucking just wonderful uh, like last 30 minutes. <clears throat> it is just fucking... I was blown away by Crawl. I was so happy with that movie. I, I, I just love it. So... Crawl, number one film of that year because I love creature features and anytime one is taken serious, it it just makes me really happy. Um, next we have a tie, uh, and they are what I call uh, technically uh, some people may not consider them horror, uh, but they uh, fuck them, uh, <laughs> and that would be uh, Lords of Chaos. Yeah. Which I fucking adore. It is such a, a good movie. And because before I had seen the movie, I knew about like what had happened because uh, last podcast on the left did like a three part series on the whole incident. So going into it, I already knew most of what had happened. And um, watching the movie, it was just so fucking entertaining, so well done, so well acted. Um, the story is so well, uh, done. And I know a lot of people are like, well, that's not what really happened. Well, the story starts off with, uh, this is the truth based on lies. Like mm -hmm. it tells you from the get go, Hey, this isn't exactly what happened. It's just kind of one version of it. Um, so those complaints are stupid to me. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, and yeah, I just, I just love crawl. Uh, Lord and Lords of Chaos, but I I guess I'll do this as an honorable mention. Um, we just covered it on the podcast. It blew me away. It has one of the greatest twists, double twist, double uh, twist. of of any movie I've ever fucking seen, and that is I See You. So good. Holy and shit! Hit, so here's what's funny. <laughs> After we reviewed it, it hit Amazon Prime, and now everybody in the horror groups are talking about it. Yeah, it's so fucking good. It is such a hidden gem. You need to fucking see it. Uh, it is the one with Helen Hunt. I haven't even heard of it. Oh my watch god! Watch it dude. now. Go watch it now. And then dude, watch it. Episode. Go in blind. Don't look at a trailer. All you need to do is make Jerry. sure it's the one with Helen Hunt. Jerry. Okay. Yeah. Make it available for him. It's on Amazon Prime. <laughs> oh, he's it... in Australia. Oh, Does it okay. know Amazon Prime in Australia. There, there, the, there is, but it doesn't always have the same stuff ours does. Uh, right. So, that's so Jerry, you should make it available for him. Tim, I will make it available for you. We'll make it available. I, for him. I, 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 I will. I, I got you. All right. Because sweet. this is a movie that is so fucking good. Yeah, it, really it good. is so well written. It covers all of its plot holes. There, there is just I don't have a negative thing to say about this movie. Wow. I don't. <laughs> It is, um, god damn it, it is just so good. It is, I don't know how well it holds up on the second watch because you know it by that point, but that first time watch is one of, I, I assume this is what people, how people felt the first time they watched like The Sixth Sense. Oh, wow. Um, you know, like it, it, it just, and it's a way better movie than The Sixth Sense. Yeah, you so. definitely, you don't, you, you, yeah, there'll be a couple of times in the movie where you're just like, what the fuck? Where'd that come from? You know? Uh, it, and, oh. It, but then you, when you're done with the movie and you're just like looking at the answer, you start rethinking in the movie and you go, oh shit, that was answered here, that was said there, that was there. Like you start realizing. Yeah, like, okay. And there's so much. When we did our walkthrough review of it, um, uh, well, no, I said that I did watch it a second time, but my second time was, uh, going through and keying all my notes for like, this goes into this later on. This goes into that later on. This is a callback to that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was taking so many notes that I didn't get to like sit down and enjoy the movie. So I don't, so a second watch is actually good because you'll then kind of notice all the pinpoints coming together. Yep. Um, but goddamn. Uh, ICU is is probably the greatest thriller of the 2010s, hands down. Uh, wow. 
That's high praise. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's amazing. So, goddamn. Um, oh, uh, Kenneth, honorable mentions. All right, so I've got three from hell on there, which mm. take it off. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, if you like the Devil's Rejects, why don't you like Three from Hell? It's the same fucking movie. Because it's not though. It's yes, not because it's, to me it is. It's the Kmart version of it. I, I think it's the same <laughs> uh, same movie pretty much. Um, I'll put Brightburn on there because I actually I really love Brightburn. I actually Brightburn. really enjoyed it. Awesome. Uh, Haunt. I'm pretty so, sure yes. that one was good. Uh, it too. It Chapter yep. Two. Yep. That one was good. Uh, I see you. I actually have that in honorable mentions. Um, that one was good. Uh, us, uh, Midsummer, which I'm kind of surprised. I, I actually expected Jay to pick Midsummer and us. Uh, you know, I went back and forth, um, but us just didn't. I really liked us, I liked us a lot, but it wasn't on the same level as Get Out. And I felt Ready or Not was just a better all around movie. Gotcha. And like I said, I got Midsummer on there. Um, Crawl definitely in there because I saw that in the theater. It was great. Um, Pet Cemetery. I liked. I liked the changes that they made to it. I enjoyed it. And it was okay. Th- and then my last one was uh, was Lord of Chaos. Lord of Chaos was great. Um, you know, so I, I had that. Seen that. It, it's really good, man. Um, if you want my sign in and my voodoo, if you ain't got it already, it's on there. No, I haven't. And it's uh, been added to Amazon. Oh, okay, but yeah, I mean, and I, it was one of those movies that, like Jerry said, I mean, you know, he he already knew the story. I knew pieces of it because I'm a metalhead, so I definitely knew pieces of it. Um, but me and him were both looking forward to it. We knew it was coming out. We were just waiting for it. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I think I was the first one between the two of us that ended up with it. And I think Jerry had it like right after me. Yeah, you got it literally like. And then I got it the next day. Yeah, because I bought the digital copy right when it showed up because we were looking forward to it. And then, yeah, Jerry got it the next day. And uh, that one was just an interesting movie. And like like Tim was saying at the end of it, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I mean, it's just oh. like, and the crazy thing about it is, is it's like, it really shows how much Varg is a douchebag in the movie. Mm-hmm. And then you start doing research on the guy and he really is a douchebag. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, and uh, that guy is a that, piece of shit. That line of, I talk, I just talk, as he's being fucking st- stabbed and bleeding. Oh god damn, that hit me. Yeah, yeah. dude. Because I, I mean, was that just whole like, movie, I'm just like, my oh. god, you know. I mean, I, uh, yeah. And the and the bad part about it is, is I I can understand the allure of burning down the churches, but at the same time, have you seen some of these churches? These churches are fucking phenomenal looking. They look wicked as shit. I'm just like, if we had churches here in America that look like that, I bet more people would go. Yeah. I mean, I get the allure of burning down a church. I mean, I'm an American. You know, I understand why people shoot up schools. Don't do it. You know, we don't like, don't burn churches down. Don't shoot up schools. I don't know what they do in Australia. Don't, I don't know. Get shoot beat up by a kangaroo. I don't, I don't even know. Like, don't do it. Well, okay? they got insane like gun control laws in Australia, as far as I know. That's yeah, pretty much yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, but well, the reason why I say that is because it's like if if you take the dynamic of this country and you look at it, you've got a, a huge, big not our, not our country, but we're talking about Norway and places like that. There is a huge history of pagan religion there on mm-hmm. top of you know the christian religions now so and then on top of the whole the, the the whole history of black metal and all the rest of that shit so you got all those together and i could like i said i could see where these guys who were trying to get quote-unquote pr at the time why they would want to do that you know what i'm saying and then on top of that you know you've got the you've got the whole uh religious battle from you know historic hi, the historical aspect of it and then you know the the moving in the crusades and all that shit so you got all those things together so like i said i can see where it come from but again those churches were fucking beautiful they were wicked as shit looking you know what i'm saying and it's like uh you know the difference between one of these churches and and a catholic a catholic cathedral look at the difference of it man i mean they both are beautiful in their own right but goddamn 
Those things were wicked looking. I would love to hang out in one of those. Fuck, I'd love to live in one of those. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I, I hope y'all found uh, some movies that uh, you haven't seen that you're like, now I've got to check that out. I, I know we all have. Um, one thing I want to shout out uh, before we, we run this outro is uh, if you enjoyed this, go check out episode 100 of Exploding Heads. Uh, horror movie podcast because they just did this except in a deep dive they did top 100 of the decade jesus wow. christ 100 fil- and not only them they had uh each? like th- no okay so what they did is they well yeah they each made a list but then they had the audience each make a list and so like 32 people made a list then they scored each movie, you know, like 100 points go to number one, 99 points go to number two, like that. Then they added all of that to fucking gather and made this list. That's wow. Just, that's just from too that, much, with uh, any tiebreakers get uh, broken from their three personal list. Um, so, fuck it. Dude, I know. It's so much. It was so much work. It was insane. Um I actually wanted to do it, but I just, I, I, a hundred movies was too much. I, I cannot, I cannot make a list of a hundred movies. Way to be uh, extra. Uh, so yeah, check that episode out. If you're like, this was wonderful guys, but you know, I want to hear this except in a five hour format. <laughs> um, yeah. So y- you can check that out. It's fucking, it is great. It is, it is truly, truly wonderful. Um, I won't uh, ruin what the number one movie of the 2010 is, uh, but it was mentioned on this show. Ooh, um, interesting. So I almost want to make a guess. Uh, y- y- I mean, you can make a guess. I'm not going to tell you. Oh, if we, when we when we get off the air, I'll, I'll okay, tell you. we can do it that way. All right, uh, for I'm, anybody that's interested, this is the list that I made as we were going through this and as we were talking and as I was fucking around on the computer looking at other things and stuff like that. Um, so, so far I've got cold fish, yeah. 13 sins, what we do in the shadows, how the greasy strangler in the deep, uh, meatball machine, Kodoku. Uh, well, in the deep is just 47 meters. Oh, well you want to see the alternate. Yeah. I want to see the actual, uh, okay. Tokyo Gore police. Cause I still have not watched it to this day. Oh, so good. Searching, uh, cat sick blue. Uh, then I came across Mandy. I still haven't watched that either. Uh, Mandy. Color Out of Space, same thing. Hadn't watched it either. Ugh. Color Out of Space. So in, the ta- in the Tall Grass. Uh, the Lighthouse, Ma, the new Scary Stories movie, uh, Velvet Buzzsaw, uh, da, 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 and uh, The Nightingale. Why is A Record of Sweet Murderer not on that list? Hey, man. I, I, hang on. He's like... It is now. And anything that y'all think that I should watch that I haven't, that's not on this list, say, say it now. Uh, I can't think. No, of it. I, I mean, for me, if I had to, if I had to look at my list and go, uh, there are three movies I would like everyone to watch. It would be um, Cold Fish because I think I, most people have seen I Saw the Devil, but I don't think Cold Fish is being seen. Cold Fish is a trip. See, Cold Fish. A Record of Sweet Murderer, and Cat Sick Blues. Those are the three from my list that I would say, hey, you probably haven't seen these. You should check them out. And I wrote um, and I wrote Cult on there because I still haven't watched that either. Uh, well, you need to watch A Cult. Is that what it's called? The one that the one that I was talking about that blew me the fuck away? Yeah. With the ending? Yeah. That's the A-cult. one you sent o- me the link to, right? Yeah. O-C-C-U-L-T. Okay. I got it on there. Okay. Um, uh, Tim, do you have three movies from that you've mentioned tonight that you would like really back people seeing? Uh, yeah, I can pick three. Uh, so I'll pick three that I don't think many people are seeing. So I'm sure most people are seeing Train to Busan, which yeah. I would say is my favorite of the decade. Uh, so three would probably be Digging Up the Marrow, um, Searching, and The Nightingale. All right, dope. Uh, Kenneth, do you have three from your list you would like to push? 
I think pretty much all the ones from my list, everybody would probably have seen. Uh, uh, let me no, go back. You had that movie, The um, Devil's Rock. Yeah, um, that one. There was another movie you said. It was early on, maybe 2010 to 2012, somewhere in there. I'm looking. I'm looking. Like The Devil's Rock was the one, was the big one that you said you hadn't seen. Um, da, da, da. let's see, 2010 was Tucker and Dale and Insidious, 11 was Devil, Drive Angry and the Devil's Rock, Cabin in the Woods, No One Lives, Evil Dead, Conjuring. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking Devil's Rock. All right, yeah, and uh, so yeah, most of my, yeah, unless it was an honorable mention, but okay, um, Jay, what about you? Do you have uh, and all my know, stuff one, is so mainstream, uh, let's go with the final 13 sins and how, okay. Good choices. All ones that I have not seen, and the final is going on the list, too. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Uh, before we get out of here, we want to say, Tim, thank you for coming on our show. Uh, I'm a big fan of your show, and I was super stoked that you were able to uh, come join us and do this list. I hope you had fun. So, uh, it is now time for you to pimp your wares Tell the people where they can find you and what you got going on, what you just did, and what you got coming up. Okay. Thank you so much for having me on, man. This has actually been an absolute blast. This has been one of my favorite guest spots on a show, so thank you for that. Um, Horror for Dummies podcast, you can find it basically anywhere where you can find podcasts, um, just under Horror for Dummies. Um, we recently just released it our, re- released it, released our uh, Halloween episode. Um we we'll speak about the 1978 classic. The next episode, we are going to be talking about director Jennifer Kent and talking about her two films, The Babadook and The Nightingale. And um, that should be interesting and fun. Um, but yeah, beyond that, um, we have another spin off show called Dead Picks from Netflix, which is just films from Netflix. Um, and we're releasing. Today, actually, uh, as soon as I finish here, I'm going to post it, is our little review on the platform. Um, oh, that was a great movie. Oh, man, so good, so good. We re- we did, the, did about a 25-minute talk on that, so it's only a quick one, but, yeah. Um, beyond that, that's all we've got really at the moment. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and all those cool things. But, yeah, thank you so, so much for having me on. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, when I listen to you and you start talking about how much you love Jaws, I was just like, me and this guy could, like, make out in a corner. <laughs> yeah. Every, every time I listen to this show, I find more things that I agree with you with. I'm like, damn, me and Jerry are fucking spot on. <laughs> yeah, like, like there's a lot, like, like I, I just connect with you, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> like, I don't blow, I don't blow uh, Halloween uh, 78 as much as you do. Um, I give it its props, but it's just, I don't know. It just never really hits with me. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, I do look forward to, uh, when your shows drop. Cause I'm just like, all right, is he covering something that I've seen? Now I got to watch a platform so I can, uh, everyone's been saying it's good. So I need to watch it so I can listen to this podcast. Um, uh, yeah. So as for us, uh, here on kill the cast, we, uh, just had an atomic age saucer cast drop with um me court and dare uh darren and that was on uh what did we do we just did um the fucking oh the day the earth stood still one of the greatest sci-fi movies to come out of the 50s i only watched the keanu reeves version uh that's trash watch the original uh (laughs) the original is one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever fucking made and um we had a bunch of fun facts on the episode that were complete lies, so that was a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, no, but it, that yeah. episode was a really, really fun episode. Um, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, uh, just uh, now it's been a couple of weeks, but we did uh, the first in the Gamera 90s trilogy with Gamera Guardian of the Universe. Um, the next episode of... Uh, underwater kaiju from outer space will be on godzilla versus Hedora, aka godzilla versus smog monster next episode of atomic age saucer cast will be on matinee with john goodman uh we're stepping out of the 50s for a moment to cover a movie that takes place uh during the atomic age 
but was actually made in the 90s, and it's one of the best John Goodman films ever. Um, and then, I don't know what the fuck we're doing next with Kill the Cast, because I haven't planned oh, Horror ahead. Coliseum. Uh, it's either going to be a Horror Coliseum, or there's uh, another uh, special show that I've been talking about wanting to do, so we may do that also. Um, okay, sure. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, goddamn. Uh, so yes, with that, check us out on Facebook and Spotify and YouTube and fucking all that shit. You know where you can find us. We're always lurking about. So, uh, once again, thank you for Tim. Uh, well, thank you to Tim for coming on. I had a blast. This episode was really fucking fun. And, uh, I love these kinds of episodes. I love list episodes. They're so much fun. I just yeah. want to do another list episode. Um, but we won't do that yet. So, uh, thank you to uh, Jay and Kenneth for not embarrassing me in front of Tim. <laughs> I tried. I really appreciate that, guys. I, you tried really hard, Jay. I know. Um, but, goddamn. I was trying Couldn't not to it. get lost in his accent. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's so good. I hate it. Like, just. What really? Is it? You know what, though? I don't know. Oh, it's fucking a great accent. Uh, but you know what? I don't know what a female Australian accent sounds like. Oh, right. I just realized Sheila. that. <laughs> you know, I need to... Renee, if you're listening, Renee uh, Davis, if you're listening, I need to know what your voice sounds like because I need to see what a female Australian uh, yeah. voice. Uh, it, uh, it seems that every fucking Australian has a last name Davis for some reason. Yeah, she lives... Uh, like in Addydale, which is apparently the the devil's playground of <laughs> Australia. Apparently, that's where everyone gets serial murdered, and some lady like skinned her husband's fucking carcass. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's bad. that sounds fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a good time. It's a fun time. It's what they do on Sundays. Um, and I thought we were shot out over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, we just shoot up over here we shoot up <laughs> schools and uh heroin and shit like that uh so yeah so okay thank you everyone uh for joining us we hope uh when you hear this maybe post your list of your uh two that two movies from each year from 2010s we're gonna get out of here tim do you have any last words for the people uh no that should be it thanks for listening yeah good fuck them uh jay do you have any last words nope I'm done. I'm going to go watch Scorpion kill people in the new Mortal Kombat cartoon. Oh, nice. Fair enough. Uh, Kenneth, any last words? Man, Australia's got some really hot chicks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like most places have really hot chicks. Uh, yeah. Again, I think it's the accent. Again, there's a, like this chick I follow I don't know on what Instagram. A female Australian accent sounds like. I can send you a link to this chick I follow on Instagram. She's I, I, I first saw her on TikTok. I can get my wife. She pretty much down. sounds can... like. I mean, yeah, Tim, go get your wife real quick. <laughs> Do you want me to really? Go get your go get your wife. Okay. Bring her on here for I don't care if she pimps your show or whatever, but like this is gonna be I would need to hear a female Australian accent. I will bullshit till you get back. Wait, I'll just call her because she's upstairs and she would fucking take forever to come down. Okay. Hello? Joel, can you just say hello to the guys from Kill the Cast? What now? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, people from the podcast. Can you hear her properly? <laughs> yes, I can. Okay, now. They, they want to hear yeah. your accent. Why? <laughs> Just say it's like pervert. Never... <laughs> no, whoa. Time out. That... I don't know what to say. Just say, say a line. Just say, I don't know. I'm from Australia. How are you? <laughs> I'm from Australia. How are you? <laughs> now say, I'm a really good Sheila. I'm a really good Sheila. Okay, I feel like that one was just racist. <laughs> it's Australian for girl. Come on, man. Is it? Oh, like, like, babe. Thank, like, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Okay, I don't feel like her accent is as thick as yours. Really? Yes. Maybe it's because it's over the it's phone. Lighter, maybe there's some, like, girl. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay, yeah. 
I was going to say before he got her on the phone that, Mikey. you know, uh, chicks with Australian accents sound the same as dudes with Australian accents, except for more <laughs> feminine. <laughs> I mean, the accent is pretty really much That's really weird. The same. You're right. I mean, it, 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 it's exactly like that. I mean, I was going to tell you, she's going to sound exactly like Tim, except I for with a higher pitched voice. I didn't expect it. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's funny. There's different types of Australians here. So you got some that uh that have a really thick Australian accent and then sound like they sound like losers. <laughs> um, and then you got others that you can barely hear it. So I'm guessing I'm one of those people with a really thick accent. No, it's not. Yeah, too, but I wouldn't not... call you a loser. It sounds great. <laughs> I had to, my accent sucks. I had to get rid of it. I love the American accent, though. So it's the exact same thing with you guys. But I had a deep Southern accent. That's awesome. That's what I want. I had to get rid of it. Why? That's crazy, man. That that is so crazy. It's like um, I've heard people – you're the first person, like, from another country that I've talked to like this that has said that they want the Southern accent. But, like, I used to have friends in California that that Mm. would just want to listen to me talk because I'm from the South. And out of the three of us on the podcast, I think I've got the thickest Southern accent. And so, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, not even all that thick and Southern, to be honest with you. Right. I mean, I, well, I could get a lot more thick if you'd like. <laughs> Tell me I have a pretty mouth. You sure do oh, got a pretty man. mouth. Yes. Oh, fuck, I got to go, guys, right now. <laughs> but, I mean, I totally get it. Like like with you, uh, I, I, don't, I don't particularly think that – I was watching this kid's show the other day with my daughter and there was an actor on there that was portraying an Australian accent. And okay. it was so extreme that yeah, I yeah. looked the kid up on, on online to see if he was actually Australian. Cause I was just like, there is no way this, this is a stereotype of how thick <laughs> well, was he Australian. Actually, no, he was American. Yeah. He was an American kid doing the, doing the Australian accent. And I mean, it was like, if you took, uh, Mick Dundee and yep. uh, dude from Wolf Creek, and let's see. Um, was it the guy from Wolf Creek named also Mick? Uh, yes. I think so. Mick Taylor. But, yeah, but if you took <laughs> if you if you took those two guys and uh, uh, what was the guy that died? Um, the 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 animal guy. Um, oh, Steve Irwin. Irwin. Yeah. yeah. If you took them three. And blended them together and mushed them and then added some steroids. That's what this kid's accent was like. I like how in Australia they have like their national animal hero is Steve Irwin. And now in America we finally have one with Joe Exotic. (laughs) No, God. All right. Are we still recording? (laughs) Yes. I I I still have not watched that. I've uh, I've had. Oh, my God. Do it. uh, You telling me to watch it. Cheyenne has. Nikki has. Everybody's. Trump might give him a pardon. Trump might actually give him a fucking pardon. We were talking about that that today. So, but yeah, going back to what I was saying, it's just it's I don't think that you have that thick of an Australian accent. It's funny, like in movies like. Um, Crocodile Dundee and Wolf Creek, how they sound in those in those movies. No one talks like that over here. I mean, maybe we do. Maybe we just can't hear our own accents. But no one walks around going, G'day, mate, how are you going? And all this stuff. Like all those Australian things that they say in those movies, no one talks like that. Legend. So that's why I don't... You guys like the word legend. Oh, legend. That is, that is true. <laughs> that is true. But yeah, like calling girls Sheila's and stuff like that. Um, I don't know anyone that uses the word Sheila. Or, uh, or says... The only reason I know, there's a YouTuber I watch called Ozzy Man, and he just, like, reviews stuff, and he's, like, legitimately Australian. He says it a lot. Yeah, okay. He's, yeah, yeah I, know, um, I know I know, who you're talking about. It's the accents don't kill me. It's the slang that kills me. Like, yes. uh, you when, gotta when I hear... It, it, oh, my, no. British slang? I just cannot. I can't deal with it, like... People are always like, why don't you like Clockwork Orange? I'm like, because I don't know what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> oh, man. I, get, I put on subtitles. I still don't I know what the fuck they're saying. I have to have like someone. I need someone to translate this into fucking English. I love British and American slang. English. I could do it. I'm pretty up on my <laughs> British slang. Oh, my God. All right. I watched like fucking uh, just the shit they say. Some of it sounds really dope, uh, especially like the shit they're saying now, like bruv. Uh, it's really dope. I like it. But like. 
some of the shit they say, I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck you're saying. Man, yeah. I am I am so good with the combination of like British, Irish, and Scottish and all that that I can actually oh, no. understand what Brad Pitt is saying in Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I like dags. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I totally can get it. I love it. Okay, this is now like two and a half hours. We're, we got to close this down. We'll be talking all night for us and, and all day for uh, Tim. So, Tim, thank you for coming on. Uh, Kenneth J., uh, always wonderful to have you children here. And uh, as for me, we're out. Everyone stay safe out there. Lock your shit up. Don't leave your house unless you're getting ramen. And uh, uh, that that's it. I'm done. No last words from you, Kenneth? Make sure you stock up on hand sanitizer if you can. If you can't, hit somebody in the throat for it. Bingo! <laughs> if you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.